This productive pattern was banned for use in competitions, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll secure some white thread to the hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll prevent our bead from spinning around the hook by inserting some lead free wire, securing it, and helicoptering the excess free. Lay down a thread base until you reach your hook point. We'll then grab my new favorite mop material called Galaxy Mop. This particular one is in tan. Secure the mop material tightly to the top of your hook shank, and if you want it to be extra secured, you can add some super glue. Snip your Galaxy Mop to length and wrap your thread to the head of the fly. Here, we'll fold over our thread, create a loop, and wrap it back towards the mop material. Return your thread to the head of the fly, leaving us with this dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a laser dubbing in tan. Insert it into our dubbing loop and spin it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll wrap our dubbing up the body until we reach the thread. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Finish it off by brushing it out to give it an extra buggy look. And this is the Galaxy Mop, one of my new favorite variations of the Mop Fly to Fish. Additionally, Jay Stockard has provided a $25 gift card to one lucky winner. To win, comment hashtag Jay Stockard in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my most used stonefly nymphs and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread and snip the excess free. Insert some lead free wire into the bead, secure it, and helicopter the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook and build up a thread dam for our next step. With this complete, we'll grab some biots. Here I like to use brown to add a bit of contrast. Place them in a V formation, securing them to the back of the fly. Wrap back slightly onto your thread dam that'll help splay the tails apart. Continue to secure the biot stems to the hook shank and begin building up a body transition slightly past the hook point. This'll, this'll build up bulk and give the tail section a better look. With this complete, we'll grab some medium black vinyl, secure it to the hook shank, and wrap back towards the tail. Return your thread forward, and begin wrapping the vinyl forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Once complete, secure, taking several thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire and snipping the excess free. Secure your tag end in place and whip finish, cutting your thread free. We'll swap out to a smaller thread for these next steps. Secure it to the head of the fly, snap the excess free, and grab a small piece of thin skin. Secure it to the top of your fly and wrap back towards your vinyl. Next, grab the dubbing of your choice. Here I'm using a copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle. Begin by wrapping just in front of your vinyl and finishing with your thread slightly in front. Grab a single biot and secure it to the side of your fly. The dubbing ball will help push it out, measuring this one to length to be about the size of our vinyl body. Do the same to the other side and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle, again using our copper dubbing and wrap this just in front of our biots. Once complete, we'll fold over our thin skin, secure it tightly in place, folding it back over on itself and securing once again. With this complete, we'll repeat the previous steps two more times, bringing us to the head of the fly for a total of six legs. With this complete, you can snip your thin skin free and whip finish to hold it all in place. Next, we'll add a generous amount of UV resin, starting just slightly onto our vinyl ribbing, over the top of the thin skin, and then slightly onto the head of the fly. Fix in place with the UV light, and brush the legs free to give it a nice, buggy look. 
If you want to take an extra step, you can fold the legs over, pressing them with a pair of pliers in order to give them an extra buggy look. And this is the Vinyl Stonefly. Its sleek, streamlined nature helps it sink quickly in the water, but it also has an excellent profile. You can find it on my website listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, or I'll throw in six. If you'd like to win six of these, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's best patterns that can catch just about anything. To start, we'll wrap some lead-free wire around the hook shank using an old pair of scissors to snip the tips free. Jam the lead-free wire into the bead and grab some black uni thread. Here I'm using 6 aught. Secure the thread to the hook shank just behind the wire, snapping the excess free. Continue to secure the wire in place, building up a thread dam in the process. This will help hold the bead and wire in place. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook and grab some black marabou. Measure your marabou to be about one and a quarter times the hook shank and secure it tightly to the back of the fly. Fold over the marabou and wrap up towards the lead-free wire, folding the marabou back over and securing it in place. Snip the excess free, wrapping back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab some blue crystal flash, grabbing about four strands and tying it onto one side of the fly, folding the extra over and securing it to the other side. Secure tightly and snip the excess free, keeping the crystal flash a bit longer than our marabou. Next, we'll grab some blue brassy wire, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping it back towards the tail. In this variation, I like to swap out the chenille for the flashier estaz. Here I'm using a UV black and blue. Pull some of the fibers free and secure it to the hook shank, wrapping towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab our estaz and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the estaz and snipping the excess free. Next, we'll grab a black feather to palmer our body. Here I'm using a saddle hackle, but I would highly suggest using a schloppen feather. They're going to be a bit longer and give your fly a better look. I just couldn't seem to find mine and thought it was a good opportunity to show you that if you don't have the exact feathers you want, you can still make a pattern that'll work. And that goes for any of my flies. Once we reach the tail, we will secure it using our blue wire, counterwrapping the feather that we just palmered the body with. This will help increase durability and add a little bit of flash with the wire. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking securing wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess furry. Clean up your excess feather, whip finish for durability, and add a bit of head cement. And this is the Crystal Flash Woolly Bugger. This particular variation is one of my favorite to use in dark and deep water. So remember, if you don't have the exact materials you need, don't let that stop you from creating a pattern. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying an underutilized fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, grab some small copper wire, Secure it to the hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back to the head of the fly. If you have a rotary vise, put in a couple turn whip finish and set your thread to the side. We'll then grab our wire and use your vise's rotary function to wrap it towards the head of the fly. If your vise doesn't have a rotary function, you can simply do this by hand. Today is also the airing of the first ever Mainly Flies podcast. You can find that on my second channel, linked here. The primary focus will be to answer your fly tying questions. So if there's anything you want to know more detail about, be sure to leave it in the comments of the most recent podcast. Once we reach the hook point, we'll grab our thread and secure the wire tightly in place, taking thread wrap both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some tinsel, here I'm using a gold hollow tinsel, secure it to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the wire. Repeating this process with the other side. Secure tightly and begin to build up a larger head than our body. Fold your tinsel over and secure it to the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure they're oriented how you like. With this complete, snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place and cover your tag ends. Snip your thread free and grab some bone dry UV resin to paint over the body as well as the head. 
optics in place with the UV light and add a second drop to the head of the fly. We want to make this look a little bit larger than the body. Fix with UV light and this is the brass It's a highly productive fly pattern that often gets overlooked and they work exceptionally well in the spring and winter months. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a realistic caddis larva hosted by the winner of our latest Discord challenge, Ties Flies. You can see the links to his social media in the comments below. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC, secure it to our hook shank, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. We'll reverse our thread direction back to the head of the fly. Next, we'll grab some monofilament line. If you don't have a spool, this is the equivalent of a four pound. Secure it to your hook shank and wrap to the tail of your fly. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction back to your starting point. Next up, we'll grab some brown ostrich hurl, securing it carefully to the underside of the fly and wrapping towards our monofilament. Once again, returning our thread to the original position. Next, we'll begin to build up a smooth body transition towards the head of the fly, ensuring to leave yourself a little room for our next steps. Once happy, we'll grab some latex, secure it to our fly, wrapping back towards our other materials. And return your thread to the original position. At which point we can whip finish, snip our thread free, switching it over to a thinner black thread. Secure to your hook shank and snip the excess free. Next up, we'll grab our latex and begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals slightly overlapping the previous wrap. This will help build a transition towards our thread, as well as give the fly a unique segmentated look. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the material, and snipping the excess free. Wrap back on the latex slightly, grabbing your ostrich hurl and lightly securing it to the head of the fly. We're only using this step to help hold it in place while we grab our monofilament wire to further secure it and add some durability. Try to have your monofilament rest in the grooves of the latex that we just created. This will help increase its segmented look and continue to do so until you reach your thread, at which point we can secure, snipping both the monofilament and ostrich hurl free. Next, we'll grab a pheasant tail, ripping off a single fiber and securing it to the side of your fly. Grab another fiber and slide it up your thread to help secure it to the other side. Once happy, use your thread to secure both in place, holding them backwards to help give them a brush back orientation. Wrap your thread forward and repeat this process a second time. Once you reach the head of the fly, we'll grab two more pheasant tail fibers and secure them facing out from the hook eye with a similar process that we used previously. Once happy, secure in place by whip finishing both behind your legs, fold them backwards and add a few extra whip finishes just in front. Snip your thread free and trim up all the remaining fibers, being careful not to snip off any of the legs that we intend to leave. With this complete, we'll grab a pair of tweezers, grabbing the fibers in the middle, bending them and pushing them back on themselves to help give them a more buggy appearance. Paint over the back with some UV resin to add some durability, fix with the UV light, and grab a Sharpie. Use your Sharpie to paint over the back of the fly, giving the upper section a two-tone look. To win six of these flies and Tied by Ty's Flies himself, along with six of my vinyl stone flies. All you have to do is leave a comment, hashtag flies below, and for a second chance to win, click the link in the comments to visit Ty's Flies. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. You have to try this productive springtime trout streamer. To start, we'll grab some black thread, here I'm using 6 aught, cure it to our hook shank, and lay down a thread base for our next steps. We'll then grab some wire, and a stinger hook. Here I'm using a size eight, which I find perfect for most trout. Measure it to length, keeping it about the size of our hook shank and using our thread to secure it tightly. Wrap up towards the hook eye, folding your wire over and securing it back towards the hook. This'll help ensure that it stays in place. 
Snip your wire free using the back end of your scissors and carefully secure the tag ends to the hook shank. Once complete, we'll whip finish and snip our thread free, swapping it out for a smaller, yet durable, 70 denier UTC. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free, and continue wrapping down the hook shank a bit further than we left off. Once complete, bring your thread forward and create a dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some fluorescent pink ice dubbing, straightening out the fibers by using your fingers to separate them, pinch them back together, and continuing this process until they lay flat. At which point, we'll insert them into our dubbing loop, space it out with your fingers, and use your fingers, or a weighted tool, to help spin it up. And brush it out to give it a nice, bucky look. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping it around our hook shank, brushing back any fibers to ensure that we don't trap it underneath. Continue this process about halfway up the hook shank. Once complete, use your thread to secure the dubbing loop in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Grab your dubbing brush, brush out any trapped fibers, and of course, give it a nice, bucky look. With this complete, wrap back on your dubbing slightly to help brush it back. Also, one simple trick with these intruders is to take a piece of foam and stick it over the hook eye so your materials or fingers don't get stuck in it. We'll then create another dubbing loop just in front of our pink dubbing ball, grabbing some white ice dubbing, UV white larval lace, and a little more pink ice dubbing. Create another dubbing blend and slide this up our dubbing loop, spinning it up and brushing it free just as we did before. With this complete, we'll carefully begin to wrap it forward in close touching spirals, brushing back any fibers to ensure we don't trap them. We'll continue about three thirds of the way up the hook. And if you have a little too much dubbing, you can secure it early and snip the excess free. Brushing everything back and taking a few thread wraps on top of it to give it a nice brush bath look. Brush any trapped fibers free. Next, we'll grab some lateral scales. Here I'm using a pearl. Secure it to one side. Folding the excess over and securing it to the opposite. We'll trim these to length to reach a little bit past our hook. Next, we'll grab some white marabou, brush the fibers backwards, and snip the tip free, leaving us with a small tie-in point. Secure to your hook shank, and begin to palmer it up the body. Once again, being sure to brush all the fibers backwards to give it a better look. Typically, I like to do about two to three turns, depending on the look you're going for. Once happy, use your thread to secure the marabou in place, and snip the excess free. Brushing all your fibers backwards and wrapping on top of it to help give it that brush back look. We'll then grab a grizzly saddle hackle, grab two fibers and secure them to the upper portion of our fly. I find it's usually easiest to start with one and then tie in the second. Secure them tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then grab a mallard flank. For this pattern, I prefer to use the slightly darker ones that have a little bit of brown in them. However, it's hard to find them sold like this, so either go into a fly shop and find what you're looking for, but if not, you can always swipe it out for a white alternative. Secure it to the head of the fly, and begin to wrap this forward, once again, about two to three turns. Brushing the fibers back as you go, and laying the stem just in front of the previous wrap. Once happy, use your thread to secure and snip the excess free. Carefully cover up your tag end and build up a small head section, wrapping back on the mallard flank slightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Seat your knot and snip your thread free and brush it out to help separate your mallard flank and give it that nice buggy look. Clean up the head and add durability by panning it over with some UV resin. Fix in place with a UV light, and this is a micro-intruder pattern that I created to imitate our local springtime smelt. 
It's a great pattern that I had a lot of success on last year. I'd give this one away, but I'm trying to fill up my fly box before the season starts. Now remember, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can pick up some flies on my website or submit a custom order form. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. With summer on the way, we're gonna be tying up one of my favorite grasshoppers. To tie it, we'll start off with some white thread. Secure it to your hook shank and continue wrapping until you reach the bend of your hook. At which point, we'll grab some dubbing. I like to use a synthetic blend of chartreuse, copper, and green. Blend them together and create a dubbing noodle. Begin wrapping your dubbing noodle forward in closed touching spirals. This will add some shine to our pattern as well as create a base for our next steps. Continuing to add dubbing until we reach the head of our fly. At which point we'll grab some two millimeter foam. Here I'm using yellow. Cut a small strip out of your foam, about a hook gap in length, and round over the ends. This will form our body. Measure it to length, sticking out just slightly past our hook bend, and secure it to the top of our hook shank. With this complete, we'll grab a yellow marker and color in our white thread. We'll begin securing our foam to the top of the fly, doing so by taking tight thread wraps over the back until you reach the bend of your hook, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction and continue securing it back up towards the head of the fly. The finished product should look something like this. Once complete, we'll continue securing our foam all the way up to the hook eye. Add another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just in front of our foam. This will help prop up our next material. We can then grab some elk hair. Here I'm using natural. Select a small clump and brush out any of the small insulating fibers. Add your clump to a hair stacker to help even out the edges, tapping it against a hard surface until they're all aligned. At which point we can remove our clump, measure it to length, about the size of our foam, and secure it to the top of our fly by taking a couple loose securing wraps before tightening it down. You want to ensure that it doesn't spin around your hook. Continue to secure it in place and grab a razor blade. We'll use this to trim away any excess fibers. Wrapping back up towards the head of the fly, ensuring everything's well secured. Here, we'll create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping back towards our elk hair. Trim your foam to length, folding your foam backwards and securing it tightly in place. Make sure it's secured, but don't take too many extra thread wraps. We'll then grab a different colored foam. Here I'm using orange, but just select a hotspot color. Cut out a small section and secure it tightly in place, followed by some silicone legs. Here I'm using tan. Secure the legs to either side of your fly. Start by securing it loosely with a single thread wrap followed by additional securing wraps once happy. We'll then cut our legs to length. I like the back ones to be roughly the size of the body, while I trim up the front ones to be just slightly shorter. Finish by adding another dubbing noodle, covering up any of our visible thread wraps, and finishing at the head of the fly. Paint over your thread once more and whip finish to secure everything in place. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is the GFA Hopper. It's one of my favorite hoppers to use as a dry dropper. It's quite durable, floats like a cork, and offers an excellent profile in the water. If you don't tie, you can visit the link in the comments to help support my channel by picking some up off my website. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a secret that fly tires don't want you to know. But to start, we'll grab some orange thread and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping your thread to the back of the hook and create a thread dam that'll be important for our next step. Once complete, grab some brown biots, strip off two and place them in a V formation. We'll measure them to be about the length of the hook shank and secure them to the back of the fly. The thread buildup will help display them out. Secure the biots tightly and begin wrapping towards the bead. Once complete, snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into the bead, secure it tightly and wrap back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab one of my favorite dubbing blends. You can find it in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle 
and begin wrapping it around our hook shank, building up a taper as we work towards the head of the fly. Take your time with this and tighten the dubbing noodle as needed. Now remember, start with a little bit because you can always add more. Next, we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure tightly, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess furry. And then we'll brush out the body to give this fly a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and add a very loose dubbing noodle, wrapping this just around the head of the fly. Pull everything back and add a couple thread wraps in front. With this complete, brush it out once again to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly called Scruffy. And while it may not look pretty, I prefer fishing these buggy flies. So remember, if you're new to fly tying, don't get discouraged by seeing someone's pretty fly because a fly like this is likely to catch more fish anyway. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm going to be fixing a band fly pattern so that a client can use it in their home waters. We're going to grab some thread in a light yellow color, secure it to our hook shank. We'll then grab some ginger or cream marabou, measure it to be a bit longer than our hook shank and secure it to the back of the fly. Once secure, fold over your marabou, wrap your thread forward, folding your marabou back over and securing it to the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and secure it tightly to the hook shank. Grab some angel hair, you can find it in the links below. Secure it to one side of our fly, fold it over and secure it to the other. Position them so they're oriented toward the upper side of the fly. Secure tightly and snip it to length. Next, we'll grab some gold wire, this is size medium. Secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Once secured, set it aside and create yourself a custom dubbing blend. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it around your hook shank in closed touching spirals. Take your time with this and tighten as needed and build up a smooth transition towards the head of the fly, adding more dubbing as needed. With this step complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Brush everything back and grab a feather that we can use to palmer the body. Strip some of the excess fibers free and secure it to the head of the fly. Snip your excess free. Begin palmering your feather around the body until we reach the tail, doing so in open spirals. Grab your gold wire and use that to secure the feather in place. We'll counter wrap with the gold wire up the body, securing our feather in place as well as adding some durability. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. If you've missed a couple feathers like me, I like to use a lighter to clean up the head. Snip your excess free and grab a hen cape. Here I'm using a light beige color. Select a single fiber and snip off the tip, leaving a small triangle that we can use to tie on to the fly. Secure tightly and begin to hackle your feather around the head of the fly, brushing the feathers back as you go and doing it in closed touching spirals. Once complete, use your thread to secure in place, brush everything back and use your thread to give it a nice brush back look. Snip your excess free and continue to clean up the head until you're happy. Whip finishing once complete. Snip your thread free and this is the Vanilla Ice Bugger. Generally, this pattern is tied with a cone head. However, this dozen I'm tying up is on its way to a river in Canada where it is in fact banned to use anything with weight. This is an excellent color that will also work well in my home waters for landlocked salmon. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be creating a realistic squid using feathers. To start, we'll attach some pink thread to our hook shank, secure it tightly, and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook shank and grab some pink marabou. We'll measure that to be just shorter than our hook shank and secure it tightly. Fold your marabou over and wrap towards the hook eye, folding the marabou back over, securing and snipping the excess furry. This will help build up a little bit of bulk that'll be important later in the pattern. Secure to the hook shank and grab some pink squirmy worm material. Measure it to length, about two hook shanks, and secure it tightly. 
snip the excess free, and repeat this process on the other side. We'll then set those aside, grab some pink crystal flash, using your fingers to pick it out to give it a little bit of size variation. Secure it loosely to one side and rotate it around the hook shank. Secure the other side, doing the same. Continue to secure back towards the marabou, trimming up the crystal flash to your liking. My goal is to keep it a bit longer than the marabou. We'll then grab a pink ostrich hurl. Grab a clump of about eight fibers, secure it to one side, once again twisting it around the hook shank. And we'll do the same with the other side. Secure, folding over the ostrich hurl, wrapping our thread forward, and then securing the ostrich hurl to the top of the hook shank. With that complete, snip the excess free, secure, and grab some eyes. Here we're using 10 millimeter living eyes in the color fire. You can find all the materials needed to tie this pattern in the link below. I've simply glued them onto some monofilament so they hang back past the hook shank slightly. Once complete, snip the excess free. We'll then grab some pink estaz, strip away the tips, and secure it to the back of our fly and begin wrapping your estaz forward in open spirals. Once you reach your thread, secure tightly and snip the excess free. Clean up the head a little bit and grab a minnow body. This one's in pearl. Slide it over the top of our fly and secure it with our thread. Once it's secure, snip off the needed length, whip finish, and snip your thread free. We'll follow this up with a little bit of head cement to ensure that it stays in place. Take your thread and re-secure it just in front of the eye and behind the estaz. Snip the excess free, sliding the minnow body backwards towards our thread. This will create the hood. Secure loosely at first to ensure you get the shape you're looking for and continue to wrap tighter and tighter. Carefully trim off any excess and secure everything in place by whip finishing. Snip your thread free and paint over the hood with some UV resin. This will take several coats to get a nice smooth finish, so take your time with this, adding a little bit at a time and fixing it in between with a UV light. With the hood finished, we'll grab some Sharpies to add some pigmentation. Here I'm using blue, red, and purple. Simply add some dots over the hood in each specific color in order to give it a little bit of variation. Once complete, we'll give it one last coat of bone dry UV resin and secure with a UV light. And this is a realistic squid. This is more of a fun artistic tie, but would make for a great pattern for salt water. However, I would swap out some of the materials. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This little fly is so good, it should be banned. However, I'm gonna show you how to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread and grab some 6X tippet, along with some fluorescent green UV resin. Coat the tip of your tippet with UV resin and fix it in place with the UV light. Continue this process, building up a large bulb at the end of your tippet. Once happy with your results, continue wrapping your thread to the back of the hook shank and measure your tippet to be about half the length of your hook shank. Transfer the measurement to the back of the fly and secure it tightly in place. To help hold it in place, we can add one wrap behind our tippet, followed by a few securing wraps over the top. With this complete, we'll continue wrapping forward towards the bead. Snip the excess free, leaving a small amount to keep the body even. Continue securing the excess tippet towards the bead and grab some extra small wire. Here I'm using black. Insert the wire into your bead and secure it tightly to the hook shank. Continue securing your wire, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction, once again taking care to ensure that our body remains even and doing so until you reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward towards the head of the fly in closed touching spirals. Here, I'm using a rotating vise as it makes this process a little easier. 
However, it's not necessary to complete the pattern. Continue this process until we reach the head of the fly, at which point we'll secure the wire in place using our thread. Take thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicopter the excess free. We'll then grab just the tiniest bit of dubbing. Here I'm using black and chartreuse. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this just behind the head of our fly. This step adds a thorax. However, the fly is meant to sink incredibly quickly, so don't add too much dubbing and remove any excess and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a simple midge that can catch fish worldwide and has a unique little hotspot to help draw attention. Try it out in this color or any pattern you can think of. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to tie up a unique pattern that was inspired by the Prince Nymph. To start, we'll grab some white thread, attach it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. We'll then insert some lead-free wire, secure it with our thread, and helicopter the excess free. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab a peacock sword. We'll strip off a few feathers and secure them to the back of the fly. Secure tightly and wrap your thread towards the bead. Snip the excess free and grab some gold wire. Here I'm using size small. Insert the gold wire into the bead and secure it tightly, wrapping back towards the tail. And grab our peacock sword but instead, we'll be using this hurl that's located on the bottom of your feather. This hurl's thinner and makes a great ribbing. We'll secure it to the back of the fly, snip the excess free, and begin wrapping your thread towards the bead, building up a smooth body transition in the process. Once complete, grab your peacock hurl and begin palmering it up the body, doing so in open spirals and trying to keep them evenly spaced. Once you reach your thread, secure, and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our gold wire and begin counter wrapping up the body until we reach our thread. This will help provide durability for our delicate peacock curl. Secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. We'll then grab our peacock sword again, strip off a few fibers, and secure them to the head of the fly. Once complete, we can begin hackling this around the head of our fly. If you have one, you can do this with a rotary vise, but if not, you can simply do it by hand. Secure, and snip the excess furry. With this complete, we'll rotate our fly around and grab some cream-colored biots. Position them in a V formation and secure them loosely to the head of the fly. This way, you can manipulate the fibers to face out splaying away from each other. Once happy, secure tightly and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using the color Hair's Ear and wrap it over the top of our bio. Once complete, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly I like to call the Prince's Sword. I've had decent success using this as an attractor pattern and would love to hear how you guys do with it. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be recreating one of the most successful bass lures out there. We'll start off with some olive thread and grab some chartreuse loco foam. Cut it out into a fin-like shape and then grab some olive dubbing. Create a small dubbing noodle, just enough to cover our hook shank. This will help prevent the foam from spinning around the hook. Once complete, secure your foam fin to the hook shank, starting with a loose securing wrap and wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. With this complete, we'll create a dubbing loop wrapping back towards our tail. Grab some more dubbing, sliding it into our dubbing loop, followed by some rabbit fur. It should look something like this. Next, we'll spin it up and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Once complete, brush everything backwards and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals. Continuing to do so, until you reach your thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our dubbing loop and snipping the excess free. With this complete, we'll whip finish to secure everything in place. Snipping your thread free once complete and grab some squish needle, much like chenille, but just squishier, as well as some estaz. 
both of these are in olive. Additionally, we'll grab some 30 pound braid, create a small loop and string it through our hook eye. Wrap the tag ends through the initial loop, pulling it tight to secure in place. Next, we'll reattach our thread, snap the excess free, and secure our chenille and a staz to the hook shank. By stripping a few fibers free, stringing it through the hook eye, and securing it tightly with your thread. Start by securing the tag ends, securing the two materials facing the opposite direction, folding it over, and re-securing facing forward. This will help ensure that everything's secured tightly. Once complete, you can whip finish once again and snip your thread free. Next, we'll fold our two materials over, grab the braided line along with the squish needle, and begin to braid the estaz over the two, doing so in open spirals and wrapping about four inches up the chenille. This will help add some durability and blend the two materials. Once complete, pinch the materials tightly, snip the excess free, and for now, we'll hold the tag ends together using some UV resin. Fix in place with a UV light, and set the tail to the side. Next, we'll grab a heavy jig hook and re-secure some heavier olive thread. Snip the excess free and continue laying down a thread base for our next steps. Next, we'll grab some tungsten dumbbell eyes, securing it tightly to our hook shank by taking several thread wraps in a diagonal pattern, as well as wrapping underneath and to either side of our dumbbell eyes. You can help further secure it by adding some super glue, both to the eyes as well as to the hook shank. Continue wrapping your thread till we reach the bend of the hook and measure your tail to length. We'll strip away some of the excess, exposing the braided lines underneath and secure them tightly with the tail facing towards our eyes. Once tightly secured, we'll fold everything over and re-secure it facing in the opposite direction. This will help ensure that our tail can't be pulled free. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread forward and create another dubbing loop. Once again, stripping away some rabbit fur and grabbing some olive ice dubbing. Blend the two together, creating a custom dubbing blend, and grab some olive silicon legs. We'll add this to our dubbing mix and snip it to length. With the dubbing complete, we'll slide it into our dubbing loop, making sure it's evenly spaced, and spin everything up tightly so nothing can come loose. And with that complete, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Next, wrap your thread towards the head of the fly, and begin to wrap your dubbing noodle forward, stopping just short of our dumbbell eyes. Secure it with your thread and snip the excess free. We'll then create another dubbing loop, this time inserting some olive laser dubbing. Ensure that everything's evenly spaced as before, spin it up, brush it out, and wrap it in closed touching spirals until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place Snip your thread free and brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is my interpretation of a bass Ned rig. It has a flexible tail that'll help it float upright in the water column and the dumbbell eyes will help give the flexible tail plenty of action. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is quite possibly the ultimate woolly bugger. To tie it, we'll start off by heating up our hook eye in order to slide over a bead. Here I'm using fluorescent orange. Insert your bead over the hook eye, slide it to the back of the hook, and use a lighter to once again heat up the hook eye. We'll then grab our bead, pulling it in an upward motion just behind the hook eye. Further secure it by filling it with some UV resin. Fix in place with the UV light, taking your time to ensure that it's fully cured. With this complete, you should be able to bend out your hook just by pushing on the bead. We'll then grab some olive thread, here I'm using ADOT, securing it to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of your hook, at which point we'll grab some marabou, here I'm using olive. Measure it to length to be about one and a quarter times your hook shank and transfer your measurement to the back of the fly, grabbing your thread and using it to skewer it tightly in place. Continue securing the marabou to the hook shank, folding it over and wrapping your thread to the bead, folding your marabou back over and securing it tightly in place. This step will help secure the marabou in place while creating an even body transition and snip the excess free. We'll then grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using olive, snip away three strands and secure it to one side of your fly. 
folding it over and securing it tightly to the other side as well. With this complete, we'll snip it to length, leaving it a bit longer than our marabou and grab some small wire. Here I'm using green. Secure it tightly to the head of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. At which point, we'll grab some olive chenille, strip away the tips and use this as a tie-in point to secure it to the back of our fly. We'll wrap our thread forward towards the bead and begin wrapping the chenille forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it tightly, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the chenille and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using a grizzly olive. Select one feather and secure it tightly to the head of your fly. Snip the excess free and begin wrapping it backwards towards your tail. I like to take about two or three additional wraps at the head of the fly before wrapping backwards in open spirals. And continue to do so until you reach your tail. At which point, we'll grab our green wire and use this to counter wrap our saddle hackle. This will help add durability as well as secure it in place. Continue wrapping your wire forward in open spirals until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. Trim the excess feather free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look, ensuring no fibers are trapped beneath the wire. And this is one of my favorite egg sucking leeches that I like to call the nuclear leech. If you'd like to help support the channel and pick a few up, you can find them on my website listed in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be making a guppy that I like to use to swing through the current. To start, we'll grab some white thread Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab a mallard flank. Pull free a few fibers and secure them to the back of the fly. Continue securing to the hook shank until you reach your bead. Snip the excess free and wrap your thread back down to the hook point. Next, we'll grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using UV pearl, securing a single strand to the hook shank, folding it over and attaching it to the other side and wrap back to the hook point. Next, we'll grab some peacock curl. Select about three strands, invert your hook, and secure it to the bottom of our fly. Continue securing until we reach our tail, wrapping back up to the bead, and securing some more crystal flash, once again wrapping back down towards the tail. With this complete, use your thread to build up a smooth body, finishing just before the bead. Next, we'll grab our crystal flash and begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some egg yarn. Here I'm using a light pink. Select a small clump, folding it over your thread, wrapping it slightly back to the body of the fly. Fold over the egg yarn to create a small egg sac and secure it using your thread. Once secure, snip the excess furry. Fold over your peacock and secure it to the top of the fly, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess furry. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread furry and grab some thin UV resin to paint over the fly. Once happy, secure with the UV light, adding some thick UV resin over the top of our fly to create a rounded shape. Take your time with this and only secure it once you're happy. We'll then grab some eyes. Add a little bit of UV resin to the side of the bead, carefully placing the eye and securing it once happy. Repeat this step to the other side and add some more UV resin to fill in the gap. I like to use this fly during high water. Swinging across the current like a wet fly can result in some aggressive strikes, but it also works well under an indicator. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna be tying up the holy grail of fly patterns. We'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Slide forward your copper bead 
securing it just behind your hook eye by taking securing thread wraps on top of the bead, repeating this step several times to help secure it in place. Finishing with your thread just behind the bead, we'll then grab some flashaboo, here I'm using pearl, as well as some chartreuse, brassy wire. Starting by inserting the flashaboo into the bead and securing it tightly with your thread, you'll continue to secure it to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook at which point you'll reverse your thread's direction back up towards the bead. We'll insert our brassy wire into the bead and securing it to the hook shank, just as we did the flashaboo. Once we reach the tail of our fly, we'll set our wire to the side and grab some olive hairs here. Create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals. We'll do so until we reach our bead. Continue to add and tighten the dubbing as needed. Once we reach our thread, we'll grab our flashaboo and begin to wrap this forward in the same direction we wrap the dubbing, doing so in open spirals. Once we reach our bead, we'll secure with our thread and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our wire. Here, we'll counter wrap both the dubbing as well as the flashaboo to add durability to our pattern and continuing to do so until we reach the bead, at which point we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. And with this complete, we'll brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll then grab a turkey flat. I've selected to use the pearlescent tips, strip a section free and secure the pearlescent side facing down towards your fly. You could also use the standard turkey flat or a pheasant tail. However, this adds some character as well as some shine to our wing case. Secure the turkey flat in place, at which point we'll grab some more hairs ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this forward until we reach the bead. Wrapping your thread just in front of the bead once complete. Next, you can grab a partridge or a rough grouse feather, strip a small clump free, and secure it underneath your fly. You want the tips of the partridge feather to reach roughly to the back of your fly. Snip the excess free, whip finish, and snip your thread free. We'll switch over to a hotspot color. You have selected to use fluorescent green, securing it to the head of the fly and snipping the excess free. We'll then fold over our turkey wing, but before we do so, we'll brush out the dubbing underneath to give it a nice buggy look and folding over the turkey wing once complete. Secure it tightly to the head of the fly, repositioning as needed, and snip the excess free. Secure everything in place and build up a prominent hotspot by whip finishing. Snip your thread free and paint it over with some UV resin. This will add durability as well as shine to our fly pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and to give the legs a better look, you can use your finger to squish and add some kinks to the upper portion of it. This will give them a more lifelike and legged appearance. And this is one of my favorite variations of the Holy Grail and works particularly well for imitating caddis. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be tying up a variation of a woolly bugger that you should add to your fly box. We'll start off by inserting a lead-free wire into our bead and securing it tightly. Continue securing the lead-free wire back towards our hook bend, at which point we'll continue securing tightly to our hook shank until we reach the bend of the hook. We'll then grab some marabou. Here I'm using olive. Pull free a small clump of the marabou and measure it to be about the length of your hook shank. Transfer the measurement and secure it tightly to the back of our fly. With this complete, we'll fold over the marabou, wrap our thread up to the bead, folding the marabou back over and securing it tightly to the head of our fly. Snip the excess free and grab another marabou feather. This time we're using rust. Repeat the process as before and secure it to the back of the fly. Once again, folding the marabou over, wrapping your thread forward to the bead, securing the marabou in place, and snipping the excess free. At which point, we'll grab a black marabou feather, measure it to length, and secure it to the back of our fly. Repeating the same steps as we've done before, folding the marabou over, wrapping our thread forward, securing it just behind the bead, and snipping the excess free. At which point, we'll grab some crystal flash, securing it tightly to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail, 
folding the crystal flash over and securing it to the other side. With this complete, we'll snip it to length, keeping it a bit longer than our marabou, and grab some small wire. Here I'm using copper. Secure the copper wire to your hook shank, wrapping back towards your tail. Next, we'll grab some flashaboo, select a single strand, and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll grab some peacock pearl, select a small clump, and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards our tail. Set the marabou to the side and bring your thread forward towards the bead, at which point we'll grab the marabou and begin palmering it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the peacock curl and snipping the excess free. Next, we'll counter wrap our peacock curl with our flashaboo, this time wrapping forward in open spirals. Once you reach your thread, secure the flashaboo in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab a tan colored rooster cape, select a single feather, stripping the excess free and securing it tightly to the head of our fly. Snip the excess free and begin hackling the feather backwards, first by taking a few wraps around the head of a fly before hackling it backwards in open spirals, doing so until we reach our tail. At which point we'll grab our copper wire and begin counter wrapping our feather in open spirals. This will help secure the feather in place as well as add some extra durability. Continue wrapping it forward until you reach your bead at which point secure the wire in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. Trim away your excess feather and if you used a white thread like I did, simply color it in with a marker of your choice and whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is a popular variation of the woolly bugger called the thin mint. It makes an excellent leech or a bait fish imitation and I'd highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is an ultra realistic fly pattern that might just help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, snap the excess free, securing the tag end back to the top of the hook shank. We'll continue securing the tag end on top of the fly well into the hook bend. At which point we'll reverse our thread's direction and grab some pheasant tail, stripping away three fibers, measuring them to be about half the length of your hook, and securing them tightly to the back of your fly, carefully ensuring that the fibers remain on the upper section of your hook shank. With this complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction, snip the excess free, and using a pair of tweezers to carefully maneuver our excess thread between our three feathers, securing it in place once complete. This step will help create separation in our tails. We'll then grab some extra small wire. Here I'm using black. Secure it to our hook shank, wrapping back towards our tails. With this complete, advance your thread slightly, then grab some more pheasant tail. Secure it to the hook shank, once again, wrapping back towards the tail. We'll then use our thread to build up a transition towards the head of the fly. grabbing our pheasant tail and wrapping it up the hook shank once complete, doing so in closed touching spirals until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure and snip the excess free. Cover up your tag ends and grab your wire and begin hackling it forward in closed touching spirals. This will help add durability and create a segmented look to our body continuing to do so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. We can then whip finish, snipping our thread free and repositioning the hook. If you have a rotating vise, it's easier to do these next steps with the fly in an inverted position. Reattach your thread and create a thread base for our following steps. Grab some more pheasant tail fibers, securing them to the underside of our hook and wrapping back towards where we left off. We'll then grab some dubbing, 
Here I'm using a blend of natural and synthetic fibers in the colored hair's ear. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this just in front of our pheasant tail. Grabbing some biots, once complete. Here I'm using brown. Use the biots to secure it at either side of your fly to create the legs, making them about the length of our body. Secure tightly and do the same to the other side. Snip the excess free. Create another dubbing noodle and wrap this just in front of our biots. Repeating these steps two more times. Also, we just reached the milestone of 140,000 subscribers. I'm amazed at the community that this channel has built and want to thank you all for following along. And as a small thank you, we'll be doing a giveaway in this video. The details will be listed in the comments below. Grab some monofilament wire and use a lighter to burn it, creating a set of eyes. Paint it over with some black UV resin and fix in place with a UV light. We'll carefully secure this with our thread to the underside of our fly, taking diagonal wraps to help position it in place and make sure it's secured tightly. With this complete, we'll add a bit more dubbing to fill in our gap. Grabbing our pheasant tail, folding it over and securing just behind the eyes. Next, we'll grab some more dubbing. This time I'm using hair's ear in black. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this around the head of our fly ensuring not to add too much to cover up our eyes. Once complete, fold over your pheasant tail and secure it just behind the eye of the hook. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything together. Snip your thread free and grab a pair of tweezers to give our legs a bit buckier look. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a realistic mayfly pattern. While it takes a lot of time, it looks great in the fly box. And as always, thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This highly successful fly pattern might trigger some fly fishers. To tie it, we'll start off with this Vivis body quill, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Wrap back up towards the hook eye, and grab some vinyl ribbing. Here we're using a nymph size in red. Secure a small section to the hook shank, ensuring that it's resting on top of the hook. Continue to secure tightly just on top of our thread wraps. Once complete, grab your whip finisher and secure everything in place. Snip the excess free and grab some UV resin to paint over the body section. This will increase the durability and give the pattern a little bit of shine. Once happy, secure in place with a UV light and pinch the vinyl ribbing together to give it some character. And this is a pattern I like to use to imitate small freshwater worms, as well as little red midges. And the great thing about it is it can be trimmed to length on the water. This is a simple guide pattern that is likely to offend some, but works surprisingly well out on the water. You can find it on my website listed below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you're not using this dry fly, you're missing out. To start, we'll grab some white thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Next, we'll grab some para wing. I like to use a high-vis orange, and secure it tightly to the top of the hook shank. We'll use this to create a post. Pulling the fibers up, use your thread to secure it, as well as wrap around it in order to create our post. Doing so by starting with loose wraps, wrapping tighter and tighter as you go, is going to be your best approach. Once you've started the post, wrap back down to the base and secure it tightly. I like to make small wedges on either side of my post to ensure it doesn't spin around the hook shank. Continue extending your post slightly, wrapping back down to the base, and snipping the para wing to length. We'll keep it a bit longer than necessary for our next steps. Wrap your thread well into the bend of the hook and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a March Brown color. You can find the specific dubbing I'm using in the links below. Create a dubbing new and begin wrapping this up the hook shank until we reach our post. Doing so in closed touching spirals and tightening or adding more material as needed. Next, we'll grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using a tan color. Select a single feather and measure it to length. Strip the tips free. Strip away some of the fibers of your feather and secure it to the hook shank, leaving a bit of extra material so we can wrap it up the post. Continue securing and snip 
the excess free. Wrap your thread back towards the post, lifting your feather upward and using your thread to secure it in place. With this complete, wrap to the bottom of your post and grab a different colored dubbing. I like to use a second color that complements the first and is typically a bit darker. Here I'm using a brown. Create a dubbing noodle and begin dubbing your body towards the hook eye. Once again in closed touching spirals, adding more material as necessary. Ensuring that your final thread wrap is on top of the dubbing we just placed. Grab your saddle feather and begin to hackle this around the post. Doing so in closed touching spirals until you reach your thread. If you find your hackle is a bit sparse, you can tie in two feathers. Once complete, secure in place, trying to prevent from trapping any fibers beneath, and snip the excess free. Trim your pair of posts to length, and color in your thread to match whatever body color you decide on. Snip the excess free, and clean up any trapped feathers. And this is the clink hammer. Its profile looks like an emerging insect and makes a great addition to any dry fly box. I would highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and popular fly patterns. To tie it, we'll start off with some brown thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab some pheasant tail. We'll grab about five or six fibers, measure them to be roughly the length of the hook shank, and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping towards the bead, further securing the pheasant tail as we go. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into your bead and secure wrapping back towards the tail. We'll bring our thread forward just past the hook point, grab some more pheasant tail and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our pheasant tail forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by just wrapping it around with your fingers. However, if your vise has a rotary function, this makes the process far easier. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the pheasant tail in place and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter wrapping our pheasant tail as we go. Doing so will help increase the durability of this pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and helicopter the excess free. Grab a few more strands of pheasant tail and secure them with the tips facing out past the bead. Generally, I measure mine to be about one and a half bead lengths. Continue securing the pheasant tail on top of our hook, wrapping back towards the wire. Once complete, bring your thread forward and grab some peacock curl. We'll select a couple strands, secure them to the body, and wrap back towards our pheasant tail. We'll return our thread to the bead and begin wrapping our peacock curl in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping our excess furry. We'll then take our fingers and use them to splay out our pheasant tail tips to form some legs. Once happy, we'll fold over the remaining pheasant tail fibers, secure them just behind the bead, and snip the excess furry. Whip finish to hold everything in place. The pheasant tail is a classic pattern that is one of the most known and used patterns out there. It makes for a great general pattern imitating mayflies and caddis exceptionally well. You can find this pattern on my website, but if you would like your chance to win this fly, comment hashtag flies, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly pattern is my secret weapon when it comes to imitating midges. To start, we'll secure some black thread to our hook shank and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand using your fingernails to strip off any fibers, leaving you with the quill underneath. Secure the strip quill to the hook shank and wrap well into the bend of the hook. Reverse your thread direction and finish around the hook point. We'll then grab our quill and carefully begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals towards our thread, at which point we'll secure and snip the excess free. We'll then add some UV resin over our quill. This will not only add shine, but also increase the durability of the highly delicate quill. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some CDC. This maroon color works exceptionally well in my waters. Secure to the top of your fly using a pinch wrap and wrap it back slightly on top of your quill. Once complete, grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a light tan. Create a sparse dubbing noodle and begin to dub your body, tightening and removing or adding material as needed once complete, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look, being careful not to break your CDC feather. 
once happy, we'll fold over our feather and secure it just behind the hook eye. Snip the excess free, folding everything back and whip finishing just behind the hook eye. And this is the smoke jumper. I like to use this pattern to imitate small midges, typically tying it behind a clink hammer or a parachute atoms. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be creating a dragonfly out of this foam. To start, I like to use this poor man's tube vise by taking this cap out of an adhesive bottle and securing it to the vise. Cut a quarter inch section of your blue foam and slide it over the needle. This solution isn't the best fix, but it does the trick. We'll then grab some black thread, secure it over the foam and cinch it down tightly. We'll then take several thread wraps to make a segmentation and whip finish to hold it in place. The first few whip finishes will be a little bit of a struggle to keep the foam out of the way, but you can just use your fingers to rotate it around. Seat the knot tightly and snip the excess free. We'll continue this process, creating another segmentation every quarter inch, continuing to do so until we reach the edge of our needle. Once complete, we'll slide it off the needle and if you've done it tight enough, everything should hold together nicely. Here I'm using a size 10 terrestrial hook and secure some white thread to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards the bend. Snip your excess furry and continue wrapping until you reach the hook point. We'll then grab some dubbing. I like to use this ice dubbing in blue done and begin wrapping this up the hook shank in closed touching spirals. This is gonna create a base for the next steps. We'll then add our extended tail to the back of the fly and secure it tightly with our thread. The dubbing will keep it from spinning in circles. Fold the excess backwards and secure, wrapping the thread on top of it. Add a bit more dubbing and wrap it slightly up the body. We'll fold our foam back over and secure it tightly to add another segmentation. Secure tightly and repeat the process of folding it backwards, securing and adding a bit more dubbing and dub backwards until we reach the foam. At which point, we'll create the wings. Here I've selected a cool material, it's called web wings. Here, we're using the molted medium done and you can use the code above to pick it up on the JStockard website for 15% off. We'll cut these out to resemble a dragonfly's wing and secure them to the top of the fly. We'll carefully secure each wing individually. This can be tricky and take your time to make sure that the wing is oriented in the proper position. We'll have the back ones facing out towards hook shank slightly, securing them both tightly and grabbing some more dubbing to help position them in place. Feel free to do this as many times as you'd like to make sure you're happy with their orientation. Next, we'll simply repeat this process, this time with the wings facing forward and creating another dubbing noodle to cover our thread and help position the wings, finishing just behind the hook eye. Once we're happy with our wings, we'll fold over the blue foam and secure it tightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and trim the foam in a rounded shape. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a blue damsel dragonfly. This pattern requires a lot of work, but is very fun to have in your fly box. If you'd like to win this fly and a $25 gift certificate to Jay Stockard, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a giant Helgramite that you should have in your fly box this spring. To start, we'll attach some tan thread to our hook shank and create a small buildup around the eye of the fly. Grab some brown biots, select two fibers and place them in a V formation, securing them to the head of the fly. Secure tightly to your hook shank and snip the excess free. Cover your tag ends and whip finish to hold it in place. Snip your thread free and slide the bead back to the head of the fly, at which point we'll reattach our thread, snipping the excess free. And grab some lead-free wire. Insert the wire into the bead and secure tightly with your thread. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping the thread well into the bend of the hook. Here, we'll create another thread dam just as we did at the head of the fly that'll help splay out our biots. Place two more biots at the back of the fly and secure them with your thread. We'll then grab some straggle string, which is essentially sparsest as, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll set it aside and grab some tan dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this in closed touching spirals, tightening 
and adding more dubbing as needed. We'll continue doing so until we reach just past our hook point. With this complete, we'll grab our straggle string and begin to counter wrap the dubbing until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our dubbing brush and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Wrap your thread to the bead and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar strip to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards your dubbing. Returning the thread forward, we'll then grab a turkey tail. I get asked where I get my materials all the time, and like this turkey tail, many of them are gathered from hunting trips. Many of you don't know this, but I actually have a second channel that has hundreds of hours of both fishing and hunting related content. You can check that out in the comments below. With this complete, we'll grab this cool set of legs and secure them to the top of the fly. Don't worry too much about how the leg placement looks, because we'll be fixing that in the next step. Just focus on securing it tightly. Grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and use the dubbing, both dubbing the body and also taking care to position the legs how you'd like. Take your time with this and create a transition towards the head of the fly. Once complete, fold over your turkey tail, secure in place, followed by your mylar. Secure them both tightly, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Whip finishing to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and grab some thin UV resin, painting it over the back of your fly. Secure with the UV light and brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a Helgramite imitation. I find they work exceptionally well in the spring and if these are in your waters, you should definitely give it a try. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This fly pattern is 100 years old and still catches fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping towards the bend of our hook. At which point we'll grab a rooster cape, here I'm using brown, select a single feather and strip some of the fibers free, securing it tightly to the back of your hook. Continue wrapping your thread forward towards the hook point, grabbing your feather and beginning to palmer it forward in close touching spirals, doing so until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure. Snip the excess free, brushing everything backwards and wrapping back on it slightly to give it a nice brush back look, at which point we'll grab some extra small wire, here I'm using green, secure it to your hook shank wrapping back towards your hackle. We'll then grab some peacock curl, select two fibers, securing them to the hook shank, once again wrapping back towards your hackle. With this complete, bring your thread forward halfway up the hook shank and begin to wrap it forward in close touching spirals towards your thread. You can double the peacock curl back on itself, helping to add some bulk, adding as much or as little as you'd like. Once happy, secure with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front of the peacock curl, as well as in back, and snipping the excess free. With this complete, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals. This will help add durability to our pattern. Secure with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab another rooster cape, this time in grizzly, select a single fiber and secure it to the head of our fly. With this complete, we'll begin to hackle it forward in close touching spirals until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure. Pull everything backwards, wrapping back on it slightly to help brush everything back and snip the excess free. And this is the Renegade, an extremely old fly pattern that I still like to carry in my fly box working exceptionally well to imitate a variety of insects. However, I typically like to use it for midges. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. 99% of people don't use this productive fly. To tie it, we'll start off with some white thread and insert some lead-free wire into our bead. With this secure, we'll helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll grab a green sharpie 
and color in our white thread. With this complete, we'll use our color in thread to create a thread dam at the back of the fly in order to create a hotspot. Continue wrapping until you're left with your white thread, finishing with your thread just past the hook point. At which point, in order to make our hotspot brighter, we'll grab some fluorescent green UV resin and paint it over our hotspot. Secure in place with the UV light and grab some synthetic quills. Use your thread to secure the quill in place, wrapping back towards our hotspot. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly and begin to build up a body transition towards the head of the fly. You can make this as thick or as thin as you'd like. With this complete, we'll grab another marker here I'm using caramel to color in our white thread. Once happy, we'll grab our synthetic quill and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, spacing it out enough so that our caramel underbody shines through, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure the synthetic quill in place and snip the excess free. We'll then paint over the body with some UV resin in order to add some shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with a UV light, grabbing a mallard breast feather. Here, I've selected to use a darker feather. We'll also need some dubbing. Here I'm using rust. Create a small dubbing noodle and wrap this just in front of our body. This will help prop up our feather in the next step. Lay your feather in place and secure it tightly to the top of the fly, adjusting the feather as needed. Snip the excess free and secure tightly with your thread, at which point we'll grab a partridge feather. Once again, you can select to use a light or a dark feather. Snip the tip into a triangle that we can use as a tie-in point, securing it tightly just behind the bead. With this complete, Strip one side free and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals. You only want to wrap about one to two turns. Secure tightly with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the partridge and snip the excess free. We'll then create another dubbing noodle using a rust colored dubbing, wrapping it just in front of our wing. At which point, we'll color in our thread, this time with a brown marker, and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip it free and brush out your dubbing to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is a diving adult caddis, a unique pattern that's used as a nymph to represent caddis that actually dive to the bottom of the riverbed in order to lay their eggs. It's not something you'll use every day, however, if you see this occurring and match the hatch, it can be incredibly productive. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This 100 year old fly pattern is extremely versatile, being used as a wet, dry, and even a streamer. To tie it, we'll start off with a hollow tinsel, secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, beginning to wrap our tinsel forward in closed touching spirals and doing so until we reach our thread and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals. If you have a rotating vise, this makes it a bit easier. However, it's not necessary to achieve the same look. Continue wrapping it forward until you reach your thread, secure tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then further secure the tinsel in place by adding some UV resin, increasing the shine and the durability of our pattern. Secure with a UV light and grab some yellow calf tail. Measure the calf tail to be a bit longer than our hook shank and secure it by taking one loose thread wrap around it prior to tightening it down onto our hook shank. This will help ensure that the calf tail doesn't twist to the bottom of our hook shank. Secure and snip the excess free. We'll secure our tag ends and grab some mallard flanks. Measure them to extend slightly past our calf tail. Secure it to your hook shank and do the same to the other side. Once again, securing your mallard flank tightly in place. 
Snip the excess stems free. Also, if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. We'll then grab some jungle cock eyes. Select two eyes, position them on the side of your mallard flank, and secure them tightly in place starting with one side and repeating this process to the other side. Snip the excess free and grab a rooster cape. Here I'm using a brown as well as a grizzly cape. Select one strand from each cape, strip some of the excess free and use that to secure it tightly in place, wrapping back towards our mallard flank. Snip the excess free, bring your thread up to the head of the fly and begin hackling our brown feather up towards our hook eye at which point we'll secure it in place, grabbing our grizzly feather and using this to counter wrap the brown feather, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure, snip the excess free, pulling everything backwards to give it a nice brush back look. And if you missed any fibers like I did, you can just burn them off with a lighter. Whip finish, to hold everything tightly in place, snip your thread free. And this is the completed Hornberg. While we're not really sure exactly what this imitates, here in my home state, some use this as a minnow imitation to imitate a dead floating minnow, but it can also be used subsurface, swung as a wet fly, or stripped as a streamer to imitate an escaping bait fish. Either way, it's a well-tested fly pattern that you should definitely give a try. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying up a 500 year old fly pattern that can still catch fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some gold wire Secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back until we reach the bend of the hook. At which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back towards the head of the fly. We'll then grab some peacock curl and secure about three strands to our hook shank. Once again securing it to our hook shank and wrapping backwards until we reach the bend of the hook. Bring your thread back up towards the head of the fly and then you can grab your peacock curl and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until we reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll secure it in place with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our gold wire and begin to counter wrap our peacock curl towards the head of the fly, except this time we'll wrap it in open spirals, continuing to do so until we reach the head of the fly. Secure it with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then wrap our thread back on the peacock slightly and grab some black saddle hackle using our hook as a gauge to select the size of the feather. Wrap some of the excess fibers free, exposing the stem and secure it to the head of your fly. Snip the excess free and begin to hackle this forward around the head of our fly. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. We'll then brush everything backwards, taking a few securing wraps to give it a nice brush back look. At which point we'll grab a turkey tail, snipping free two sections and placing them in a V formation. We'll measure this to be a bit longer than our hook shank and secure it tightly to the head of the fly using a pinch wrap. Once happy, take further securing wraps and snip the excess free. We'll then cover up our tag end and whip finish to hold everything together. Snip your thread free and paint over the head of the fly with some UV resin. And this is one of the first documented fly patterns called the alder. It's still a very successful wet fly. Swing it through the current to imitate a sunken insect or a diving caddis. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you 
in the next one. If this year-round fly pattern is missing from your fly box, you're going to want to change that. We'll start this pattern off with some olive thread, snap your excess free, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we can rotate the fly in our vise to make the next step a little bit easier. Grab a mallard or a wood duck flank, pull a few fibers free, and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue to secure the fibers on the back side of our hook shank. Rotate the fly back to its original position and continue securing the fibers forward until we reach our hook eye. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a brown hair's ear as well as a tan ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this around the head of your fly, building up a dubbing ball that ends roughly at the hook point. And once complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Fold over your feather and secure it just behind the dubbing ball. Snipping the excess free once complete. And then securing the tag ends using a whip finisher. Snip your thread free and you can either leave the fly as is, which will look a little bit better, or make it virtually indestructible by adding a little bit of UV resin. And this is the WD-40. This is the fly that I like to use as a betis or a midge imitation, and it's always in my fly boxes. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is quite possibly the world's most popular saltwater pattern. To tie it, we'll start off with some white thread, cutting the excess free. We'll then grab some dumbbell eyes, and unlike what I'm doing here, Secure it to the upper side of your hook shank. You can secure it tightly in place by taking figure eight patterns around the dumbbell eyes, ensuring that they're even with the hook shank, and increase its durability by adding a small amount of super glue to your thread wraps. Continue securing with your thread until it's seated snugly in place. With this complete, we'll wrap back slightly into the bend of our hook, grabbing some clear D-rib. Secure the D-rib to the hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. With this secured snugly in place, we'll grab some sort of flash. Here I'm using a pearl lateral scale. Secure the flash wrapping back towards your D-rib before returning your thread back up towards our dumbbell eyes, smoothing out any inconsistencies in the body that may have been left behind. At which point, we'll grab our lateral scale and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals and continuing to do so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it tightly in place just in front of our dumbbell eyes. Snip your excess free, grabbing your vinyl D-rib and wrapping it forward, once again in close touching spirals and continuing to do so until we reach the dumbbell eyes. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Secure tightly by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and snipping the excess free. Now that we have everything tightly secured in place, you'll want to twist your dumbbell eyes back up towards the top of the fly. And of course I'm kidding. Unlike me, you should start with your dumbbell eyes on top of the fly, as this fly is meant to ride inverted. Doing what I'm doing here will decrease the durability of this pattern, and it would be best to retie. However, I couldn't be bothered to do so. With our dumbbell eyes re-secured in the correct position, we'll invert our fly pattern and grab some synthetic deer hair. Measure it to be about two times the hook shanks in length and secure it tightly to the top of your fly by taking a loose thread wrap around the deer hair. Before tightening down too much, you can reorient the deer hair towards the top of your fly before securing it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll snip the excess free and separate the deer hair to either side of our hook shank. We'll grab some crystal flash here I'm using pearl, securing 6 to 10 strands on top of the fly pattern. Secure tightly in place. Snip the excess free. Grabbing your whip finisher to secure everything tightly in place. Snip your thread free and trim up the flash to length. I like to keep mine a bit longer than your deer hair. We'll then paint over the head with some UV resin to increase its durability and fix it in place with a UV light. And this is Crazy Charlie's variation of the Clouser Minnow, specifically intended to be used for bonefish. However, it works just as well for stripers or any predatory fish that's eating small bait fish. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you 
in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying up one of my all-time favorite dry flies that works particularly well for cutthroat and brook trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and grab some golden pheasant crest. We'll select a single feather, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it up the hook shank, stopping just short of the hook eye. Snip your excess free and cover up the tag ends. Next, we'll grab some peacock curl. Selecting one or two fibers, securing it to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. Advance your thread slightly and begin wrapping your peacock curl forward until we reach our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. We will also be doing a giveaway for this fly, so if you'd like to win it, all you have to do is comment hashtag flies and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't win and want to give it a shot, you can pick some up on my website listed below. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and continue wrapping forward while leaving a small gap. We'll then advance the thread past the peacock curl and continue to palmer the peacock curl just as before, this time making it slightly shorter. Once complete, secure with your thread and snip the excess free. We'll also snip our thread free and switch over to a red thread. Here I'm using a flat 140 ultra thread. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free, and use your thread to build up a prominent base. This will be the hot spot of the fly. Once happy, we'll whip finish to secure it in place and snip the excess free. Once again, switching over to our black thread. Next, we'll grab some brown saddle hackle, select a single fiber, and secure it to the head of the fly. Set it aside, and if you'd like to tie the original, grab a white calf tail. However, I prefer to use this white poly yarn. We'll place the poly yarn on top of the fly and secure it tightly in place. In order to create separation by crossing over your thread in between them in a zigzag pattern and also wrapping both behind, as well as in front of our poly yarn, to give it some security. In the end, it should be propped up like so. Once happy, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward in closed touching spirals, wrapping it in between our poly yarn when we get there, and continue doing so until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then whip finish to secure everything in place and build up a prominent head. Snip your thread free, and finally, trimming your poly yarn to be slightly longer than your hackle. And this is the Royal Wolf. It was my favorite childhood fly that works exceptionally well as an attractor pattern for brook trout as well as cutthroat. And I'd highly encourage you to give it a shot. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If there are caddis flies in the waters that you fish, this fly is for you. To start, we'll use some flat black thread and wrap well into the bend of the hook. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a blend of synthetic UV dubbing in olive. Secure it to the back of the fly and snip the excess free. And then trim our tail to length. This will just be a tag so you can keep it quite short. Next, we'll grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Secure it to the hook shank and wrap back towards our tag, bringing your thread forward once complete. Grab a turkey tail, snip off a quarter inch section and secure it to the top of the fly, and once again wrapping it back towards the tag end, returning your thread to the hook point once again. Finally, we will grab some flashaboo. Secure this to the hook shank, wrapping back towards our tag end and turkey tail. Create a dubbing noodle with the same dubbing used for the tag end and begin wrapping it up the body until we reach the hook point. Using the hook point as a gauge of a stopping point will help you stay consistent when creating multiple flies. With the body complete, grab your flashaboo and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Fold over your turkey tail over the back of the fly and secure it in place with your thread. We will then grab our brassy wire and begin wrapping it forward, once again in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Stopping once we reach our thread and securing it in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess furry. With this complete, we'll wrap forward towards the hook eye leaving a little bit of room, fold our turkey tail over and begin wrapping back towards the hook point and then grabbing some brown ostrich hurl. 
Secure it in place. Snip the excess free and begin wrapping it in closed touching spirals towards your thread. Once happy, secure in place and snap the excess free. Wet your fingers and pull the ostrich hurl in a downward motion. Grab your turkey tail and fold it over, securing in place once complete. Next, select two strands of the turkey tail, folding them backwards and wrapping to secure them in place. Snip the excess free and cut your turkey tail to length to mimic legs. Secure everything in place and build up a head in the process by whip finishing. Snip your thread free and grab some UV resin, not only adding durability, but also increasing the shine of the wing case. This is a complicated tie that's not for everyone. It does look good in the fly box and is extremely successful at catching trout. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you're fishing for wintertime trout, then this midge is a must have. We'll start off with some white thread, secure it to our hook shank, Snap the excess free and grab some extra small black wire. Insert the wire into the bead and secure it tightly in place with your thread, continuing to secure it well into the hook bend. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. We'll then grab some flat blue thread, securing it to your hook shank and wrapping back towards our wire. With this complete, we'll begin building up a transition towards the head of our fly. Doing so by wrapping up towards the hook point, doubling back on your thread till you almost reach your starting position and returning back up to the hook point. With this complete, we'll whip finish, snip our thread free, grabbing our blue thread and beginning to wrap it forward up towards the head of our fly. With this complete, we'll whip finish, Snip our thread free, swapping back out for our white thread. With this complete, we'll grab our black wire and beginning to wrap it forward in open spirals in order to add a segmented look. Doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some blue ice dubbing along with a small amount of black hair's ear. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it just in front of your hook point, creating a buildup of dubbing, followed by a dubbing noodle of black hair's ear. We'll brush this one out in order to give it a buggy look. Wrap this just in front of your blue dubbing ball, finishing with one thread wrap in front. We'll give it a brush back look. With this complete, we'll brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll then grab a blue sharpie, color in our thread, and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free, and this is a blue midge that I like to place behind a tractor pattern in the winter months. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to stock up your fly box for the winter, you can visit our website listed below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. These flies will help you catch more fish this winter. To start this pattern, we'll grab some Vivas thread in white and secure it to our hook shank. We will then grab some Flashaboo here I'm using pearl. Secure a single strand to our hook shank and begin wrapping towards the bend of our hook. We'll continue wrapping well into the hook bend, at which point we'll reverse directions and begin building up a smooth transition towards the head of the fly. With this step complete, grab your flash boo and begin wrapping this in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that we cover the entire thread base. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and snip the excess furry. To increase the fly's durability, as well as its shine, we'll add a small layer of UV resin. Here I'm using a thin bone dry. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand and secure it to the head of our fly. Once secure, we'll begin hackling our ostrich hurl towards our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. 
Whip finish to hold everything in place. This is a simple fly that can be tied in small sizes. Additionally, its bright color allows it to be noticed. Midges are definitely a staple of the trout's diet in winter, and your fly box should have several of them. If you'd like to stock up, you can visit my website below to see all of our midges selection. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up one of the best variations of the band squirmy worm. We'll start with some hot pink thread. Snip the excess free, securing the bead in place using some lead free wire. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. At which point we'll take a few wraps forward and grab some stretchy material. Here I'm using a rubber D-rib, however I would suggest using a stretchy dental band that I've linked in the comments. Create a loop with your material and secure it to the back of the fly. Make sure your loop secured tightly by taking securing wraps both in front as well as behind your loop and continue towards the head of the fly. Snip one of your excess bands free, once again continuing towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our rubber material backwards, take a few securing wraps towards the head of the fly, and once again create a loop in our rubber band, using your thread to secure it lightly in place at first. This way, by pulling on the opposite end, we can shrink the loop to the size we're looking for. Once happy, secure in place with your thread and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Snip your excess free and use your thread to smooth out the body. Finishing at the head of the fly. Hold everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and paint over everything with some UV resin to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and grab some spare wire. Use the wire to string it through the two loops that we just created and open up the loops at the end using a pair of tweezers. Next, we'll grab some squirmy wear material, here I'm using pink, insert it through our loop, and begin pulling the wire to help draw the squirmy wear material through the two loops. They should be quite tight to hold it in place. Once complete, remove the wire, snip the squirmy wear material to length, and this is an improved squirmy worm, suggested by Tim from the Trout and Feather. I've linked his full video in the comments below. It's an excellent pattern that promotes a lot of movement in the water and also can be replaced if the fish chew it up. I would highly suggest giving it a try. And as always, if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Are you tired of your friends making fun of you for fishing your egg patterns? Well then this fly is for you. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread and an oversized orange bead. We'll insert a lead-free wire into our bead to help hold it in place. Secure tightly with your thread and helicopter the excess free. We'll continue building up a thread dam just behind our bead and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Insert the wire into our bead and secure it tightly with your thread, continuing to wrap towards the bend of our hook. Stopping just before the start of the bend, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction, ensuring that we have tight thread wraps to smooth out our body and continue to do so until you reach the bead, at which point we'll grab our thread and begin to wrap it forward starting with a close spiral at the beginning of the fly, after which opening it up to open spirals and continuing to do so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure the wire in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some peacock hurl, select a single strand and secure it to the head of our fly. Wrap your thread forward and begin hackling the peacock forward in close touching spirals until you reach your thread. With this complete, we'll secure the peacock curl in place and snip the excess free. And this is a fast sinking egg pattern disguised as a zebra midge. I'd highly suggest adding a few to your fly box for that fast moving water or pocket water trout. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying up a fly pattern that you won't want to be without if you happen to run into this hatch. To start, we'll use a makeshift tube vise and grab some yellow foam. Cut out a small section and carefully push your pin through the middle of it. With this complete, we'll grab some white thread and use this to secure the foam tightly to the pin. Snap your excess free and grab some olive elk hair. We'll select a small clump and secure it to the top of our foam. To help position it, we'll take an additional two wraps around it 
before securing it in place. Ensure that you secure tightly with your thread. Pull everything backwards, beginning to wrap your thread backwards in open spirals, ensuring that the elk hair stays at the top of the foam, and continue to do so until we reach the tip, at which point we'll secure tightly and continue back towards the head of the pin, once again in open spirals, wrapping in between our previous wraps. With this complete, we'll secure everything tightly in place and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free, and this will be the extended body. Carefully pull everything free, removing your pin and replacing it with a hook. I like to use an emerger style hook, generally in a size 10. We'll swap over to a pale yellow thread, continue wrapping, laying down a thread base, and returning your thread to the head of the fly. At which point, we'll grab some pale yellow dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend, create a dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap this over the top of our thread base. Creating a small buildup of thread at the back of the fly. We'll use this to help prop up our extended body, placing it on top of our hook shank and securing it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll grab some more dubbing, create another dubbing noodle, and wrap this just in front of our extended body. Once again, creating a small buildup of dubbing for our next step and brush it out slightly to help blend it into the body. Next, we'll grab some CDC feathers. Here I'm using the color sulfur, securing it tightly to the top of the hook shank. I also like to take a single thread wrap behind it to help prop the feather upwards. Once secure, snip your excess free and add some more dubbing just in front of our CDC feather. We'll then grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using an olive color Select four fibers and secure them just off to the side of your fly. Fold the other side over and secure it to the other side. With this complete, we'll snip everything to length, trim it up a bit, and add another CDC feather. This time, we'll have it be a bit longer than the previous one. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and grab a single strand of a saddle hackle. Here I'm using a yellow. Strip some excess fibers free and secure it to the side of your hook shank. Snip your excess free and grab some olive legs. Fold over a single strand and secure them to either side of your fly. Take a single thread wrap to help hold it in place while you position your legs. Once happy, secure it tightly in place and snip everything to length. Next, we'll grab some wood duck or dyed mallard flanks, pulling the fibers backwards and stripping the excess free. This should leave you with two tips that look something like this. We'll start by securing the flank to one side of the fly at a 45 degree angle and then doing the same to the other side and securing them both tightly in place. To help prop them upwards, we can also take a few thread wraps behind them and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle and use this to wrap it in behind our mallard flank to continue to help to prop it upwards. With this complete, we'll continue dubbing the body until we reach the hook eye. Next, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward, first behind the mallard flank, between it, and then continue hackling until you reach the head of the fly. Secure with your thread, and this is my favorite eastern green drake pattern. Some of my more memorable fishing experiences has been using this exact pattern. Although you have to time the hatches perfectly, if you end up finding the green drakes hatching, you won't want to be without it. So I'd highly suggest keeping some in your fly box from the end of June until about the third week of July, depending on your elevation. And I hope that some of you get to experience that this year. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This little fly might just help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread and grab some small wire. Here I'm using the color rust. Secure it tightly to the head of the fly and continue securing it to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly and begin to build up a body transition to build up a cone shape by laying down thread until you reach the head of the fly.
at which point we'll grab some thin UV resin and begin to paint this over our body. Be sure to add just a thin layer as to not build up too much bulk. Once happy, secure in place with a UV light. We'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, continuing to do so until we reach the head of the fly. At which point we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front of the wire as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is one of my favorite variations of the ice cream cone midge. It can be tied up in extremely small sizes and can make an excellent attractor pattern when you're imitating small midges. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna be tying a simple dry fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, we'll grab some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and wrap to the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll grab a grizzly cape and pull free a few fibers. Measure them to be about the length of your hook shank. Transfer your measurement and secure it tightly to the back of your fly. With this complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and continue securing the fibers upwards, leaving a small amount of room at the head of our fly. Snip the excess free and grab some synthetic quills. However, you can also use natural. Secure the synthetic quill to the back of the fly, once again wrapping towards the tail. And with this complete, we'll advance our thread forward and begin to build up a body transition. Next, we'll grab our synthetic quill and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure tightly in place using our thread and snip the excess free. You can leave it as is, or to increase the durability as well as the shine, coat it in some UV resin, fix in place with the UV light, and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select one feather, pulling a few fibers free, and using this to secure it to the head of the fly. Next, pull free two feathers from your grizzly cape and measure them to be a bit longer than your saddle hackle. Once happy, secure the feathers in place, pulling them forward and wrapping behind them to help prop them upwards. Take your time with this step and continue to wrap around them with your thread until they're positioned how you like. At which point, snip the excess free, reposition if necessary, and in the end, they should look something like this, splayed apart and sticking upright. Trim away any excess feathers poking out onto the body and grab your saddle hackle and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure the saddle hackle in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and this is a variation of the mosquito. If you don't tie and would like to help support the channel, you can pick it up in this variation as well as a gray one on my website below, or comment hashtag mainlyflies for your chance to win a few. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. You have to try this simple fly pattern. To start, we'll grab some monofilament wire and secure it to our hook shank and grab some lead-free wire. We'll insert this into our bead, secure it in place, and helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure it to the head of the fly. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook, at which point we'll reverse our directions back to the bead. With this complete, we'll begin to wrap our mylar forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. will secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the mylar free. With this complete whip finish to hold everything together, snip your thread free and paint over the body with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix with the UV light and this is the mercury drop. It's easy to tie, sinks fast and is completely indestructible. If you fish for pocket water trout, I would definitely suggest giving it a try, and I will see you 
in the next one. Fish can't resist this incredibly simple fly pattern. To tie it, we'll start off with some great thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. We'll continue laying down a thread base for our next step. Grab some lead free wire and secure it tightly to the hook shank. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our wire forward in closed touching spirals. You can add a single layer or two if you need it to sink faster. Continue doing so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. With this complete, we'll use our thread to secure the wire tightly in place, creating a thread dam both in front as well as behind the wire. And if you'd like to enter a competition showing off your fly tying skills, you can visit our Discord link below for the holiday fly tying challenge. We'll wrap back to the bend of our hook and grab some hairs of your dubbing. You can add more texture to your dubbing by selecting a few different colors. Here I've grabbed a brown as well as a black, mixing them together to create our dubbing blend before creating a dubbing noodle on our thread. With this complete, we'll begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, building up a transition towards the head of the fly, tightening or adding more dubbing as needed. Once complete, we'll brush it all back and add a few thread wraps at the head of our fly, and of course brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Whip finish to create a prominent head and hold it all together. Snip your thread free, adding some UV resin to the head of the fly to help increase its durability. And this is the original waltz worm, a simple fly pattern that's incredibly productive in the water. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly pattern should be in everyone's fly box. To tie it, we'll start off with some white thread and insert some lead-free wire into our bead. Secure it tightly with your thread and helicopter the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping till we reach the bend of the hook and grab some pink floss. Here I'm just using thread that I've doubled over several times. Secure the thread tightly to the back of your fly. Continue securing to your hook shank and snip the excess free. We'll then cut our tag end to length. You can make this as long or as short as you like. However, I think this pattern looks a little better when kept short. Next, we'll wrap our thread up to the head of the fly and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Insert the wire into the bead and secure it tightly with your thread, wrapping back towards our tag end. Grabbing some natural colored hairs here, create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this forward in close touching spirals, creating a slight transition towards the head of the fly. Continue doing so until you reach your bead. At which point we'll grab our wire and begin counter wrapping in open spirals in the opposite direction. Doing so until you reach your thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind your wire and helicopter the excess free. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather, split our thread, and insert the CDC into it. Snip the excess feather free and spin it up. We can then begin to hackle this around the head of our fly, pulling the fibers backwards as we go. You only want about one to two turns and can remove any excess CDC as necessary. Trim it to the desired length and add a bit more hairs of your dubbing to the head of your fly. Once complete, we'll whip finish, snip our thread free and swap out to a hot spot color. Secure it in place, snip the excess free and whip finish in order to build up a prominent hot spot. You can make this as thin as you'd like, however, I like to make mine quite prominent. And this is the blowtorch. A proven fly pattern that works exceptionally well, has infinite variations, and this particular one is one of my favorites to use for wild brook trout. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying one of Finland's most popular fly patterns. To start, we'll grab some gray thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. 
and grab some brown bear fur. However, I don't have any, so here, I'll be using muskrat. Snip a small clump free and secure it to the top of the hook shank, taking thread wraps both behind as well as in front to help pop it up, at which point we'll continue to secure the excess fur and snip the excess free. Use your thread to secure any remaining fur in place, splitting the wing about halfway and using your thread to weave it in between, helping to keep them separated. Once complete, it should look something like this. We'll start wrapping towards the bend of the hook and grab some extra small black wire. Secure the wire to your hook shank and continue wrapping until you reach the hook bend. At which point we'll grab some dubbing, here I'm creating a mix of hair's ear as well as some muskrat. Mix the two together and create a dubbing noodle. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our dubbing noodle forward in close touching spirals, building up a transition as we work towards the head of the fly. Continue adding and tightening the dubbing as needed. Also, this is the start of a new series where we'll be featuring the most popular flies in your country or even your state. So if you want to see yours tied up next, comment it below. We'll continue wrapping the dubbing forward until we reach the head of the fly, at which point we'll grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using gray. Secure it to the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and grab your hackle and begin to wrap it backwards towards the bend of our hook. And we'll continue to do so until we reach our wire. At which point we'll grab our wire and begin to counter wrap our hackle. This will help secure it in place as well as increase its durability. Once again, continuing to do so until we reach the head of the fly. And if you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Once we reach the head of the fly, We'll secure the wire in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. Snip away your hackle and whip finish to build up a head. Snip your thread free and brush it out to free up any trapped fibers and give it a nice, buggy look. And this is the Nale Pa, commonly referred to as the National Fly of Finland. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying up a freshwater shrimp that can work particularly well if you have scuds in your water. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. To start, we'll secure a white thread to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook, in order to lay down a thread base. Return your thread to the head of the fly, and secure some lead-free wire in place. Secure tightly, wrapping your wire in front of your thread, and using this to wrap it backwards to add some weight, as well as profile to our pattern. Continue to do so. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our wire's direction back up towards the head of the fly in order to build up some more bulk and weight. Secure it all in place using your thread and helicopter the excess free. Once again, cover it up with your thread to make sure it's secured tightly in place and grab some brassy silver wire. We'll secure this towards the head of our fly and wrap back towards the bend of our hook. Bring your thread back to the middle and grab some hollow tinsel. Here I'm using silver, securing it to the upper side of our fly and wrapping back towards the back of our fly. With these secured in place, we'll follow up with one more material called the thin skin. Trim the thin skin to a point and secure it over the back of your fly. Once again, wrapping back towards the tail. Next, we'll advance our thread slightly, create a dubbing loop, wrapping it back towards the tail before returning our thread towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a UV dun, inserting it into our dubbing loop and spinning it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look before wrapping it around our fly body. Doing so in close touching spirals, brushing the fibers back as needed until we reach our thread. Here, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look and imitate legs. Once happy, we'll grab our thin skin fold it over the back, securing it at the head of the fly. With it secured tightly, 
we'll snip the excess off close. Grab our hollow tinsel, folding it over the back and securing it at the head of the fly. Snip your excess free and grab your wire. We'll counter wrap our wire over the dubbing, being careful not to trap too many fibers in the process. Continue to do so, wrapping forward in open spirals, brushing out the dubbing with your fingers as needed. This helps add durability as well as a segmented look to our pattern. Continue to do so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure the wire in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire. Helicopter the excess free and whip finish to build up a head and hold everything together. Snip your thread free and brush it out in a downward motion to free up any trapped legs. At which point, we'll trim it up to mimic legs, keeping the legs just shorter than our hook point. And grab some UV resin. We'll paint over the back with some UV resin this will make our pattern extremely durable and also add a great amount of shine to the back of our fly. Fix in place with a UV light and follow it up with a second layer. Building up the layers in small portions will give it a better appearance in the end. Fix in place with the UV light, coating it over with one last coat of thin UV resin to help bring out its shine. And this is the Diamond Scud, a fly pattern that can work particularly well in the winter, as well as in any body of water to use as a tractor, where you'll find freshwater shrimp, otherwise known as scuds. Thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to stock up your fly box with some of the fly patterns we have, you can visit our website listed in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This will likely land you your first fish on a dry fly this season. To tie it, we'll start off with some small black thread and securing it to our hook shank all the way to the bend of the hook. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, keeping your thread buildup as smooth and uniform as possible. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll reverse our thread slightly and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select a single feather measured to the size of your hook, strip a few fibers free, and use this to secure it to your hook shank. Bring your thread back up to the hook eye and begin to hackle your feather forward until you reach your thread, typically about two to three turns. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush all our fibers upward using our thread to help hold it in place, beginning by wrapping back on it slightly and then looping around it as you would a parachute. Continue doing so until all the fibers stand upward. Next, we'll take our thread and carefully run it through the fibers to help spread them back out as well as increase the fly's durability. Finishing with your thread just in front of our tuft. Next, we'll grab a high-vis parapost, you're using fluorescent green, and secure this just behind our hook eye. And fold the material backwards using your thread to hold it in place. Once complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together, snip our thread free, and cut your parapost to length. And this is the high-vis Noceum Midge. It offers an incredibly thin profile it's one of my go-to patterns when I see any midges or small flies emerging. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If there are stone flies in your water, this is a fly pattern that you won't want to be without. We'll start off with some olive thread, snap the excess free, and grab some silicon legs. Here I'm using olive. Create a loop with your legs and secure it tightly to the head of the fly, wrapping slightly into the bend at which point further secure back towards our bead and snip the excess free. We'll then whip finish, snip our thread free, sliding your bead forward once complete. Next, we'll trim our legs to length. I like them to be about the size of the hook shank. With this complete, we'll reattach our thread, pull the excess free and continue wrapping until we reach the bend of the hook. Here we'll create a thread dam that'll be useful in our next step. Add another leg section to the back of our fly in a loop formation as we've done before. Secure it tightly and snip the excess free. Once again, trimming your legs to length. Once complete, they should look like this. We'll then grab some chenille. Here I'm using olive. However, a molted olive or a molted brown color looks even better. Strip the tips free 
and secure it tightly to the back of our fly. Wrapping back towards the tail, advance your thread slightly, set your chenille to the side, and secure another rubber leg in place. This time, we won't create a loop. We won't worry too much about the positioning of the legs at this time. Advance your thread forward and do the same just behind the bead. Secure tightly and snip them to a rough length. We'll then grab our chenille and start palmering it forward in closed touching spirals. We'll use this to help position and prop up our legs. You want them to stick out sideways and not forward or too far backwards. However, one reason I like this pattern is because it's exceptionally buggy. So if your legs don't turn out quite right, it doesn't necessarily matter. We'll secure it in place with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the chenille and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free and trim up your legs to length. I like my back set of legs to be slightly shorter than the first set. But remember, the longer the legs, the more action you'll have in the water. And this is a mini Euro Pats. It's an extremely buggy pattern that works exceptionally well imitating stoneflies and larger insects. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a fly pattern that I like to use to imitate our local smell. To tie it, we'll start off with some blue thread, snip the excess free, and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll create up a build up of thread just beyond the bend of our hook, wrapping back towards the head of our fly. We'll then paint over this thread build up with some UV resin and secure it in place with a UV light, doing so to add a small hot spot to the back of our fly. Fix in place with a UV light and grab some lateral scale. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the lateral scale to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards our hot spot, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction once again, back up towards the head of the fly, making sure to leave an even thread base for our next step. Also, if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Once our thread reaches the head of the fly, we'll grab our lateral scale and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place with our thread and snip the excess free. Wrapping back on it slightly, we'll then grab some more UV resin, painting this over our lateral scale, as well as durability. This will help add some shine, as well as durability to our pattern. Fix in place with a UV light, and grab some marabou. Here I'm using purple. Measure the marabou to be a bit longer than our hook shank, and secure it to the top side of our fly. Snip the excess free, and cover up your tag ends. We'll then grab some blue marabou, select a small clump, once again securing it to the top side of our fly. Secure tightly, snip the excess free, and cover up your tag end slightly. We'll then grab some UV blue crystal flash, securing it to the top side of our fly. Secure tightly, snip the excess free, and grab some more marabou. This time we'll use gray, securing it once again to the top of our fly, snipping the excess free, and covering up the tag ends, making sure to use as little thread as possible. Next, we'll grab a red feather, strip a small section free, and use this to create a throat on the underside of our fly. Secure it tightly in place with your thread, and snip the excess free. Cover your tag ends so there's no exposed red or marabou feathers. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and grab some eyes. We'll paint over the side of the fly with some super glue, placing our eye in place, repeating this process for the other side. We'll then fill in the gap with some UV resin to add some extra security as well as round off the head. Fix in place with the UV light, and this is an ice smelt, a pattern I like to use here in Maine to catch salmon and brook trout. However, the marabou provides great action, and swapping out the colors, you can use it to represent any bait fish. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly is meant to grab fish's attention and works exceptionally well in dark water. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, creating a thread dam just behind our lead-free wire to ensure that it doesn't move around. Snapping the excess free and continue to build up your thread dam, at which point we'll wrap back just to the start of the hook bend and create a small build up of thread that we'll use in our next step. 
With this complete, we'll grab some brown biots, place them in a V formation, measuring them to be about half a hook shank in length, and securing them to the back of the fly. Our thread buildup will help splay out the tails and give them a V shape. Continue to secure the tag ends to the hook shank and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using blue. Insert the brassy wire into the bead and secure it tightly with your thread, continuing to secure it to the hook shank until we reach our tail. Set your thread to the side and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic UV blue dun. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it in close touching spirals up your hook shank creating a transition towards the head of the fly. Continue to add and tighten your dubbing as needed, and we'll continue to do so until we almost reach our bead. And if you'd like to win a dozen of these, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And if you don't happen to be the lucky winner, you can always pick a few up from my website. You can find the link in the comments below. With the dubbing just about reaching the bead, we'll grab our blue wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter wrapping our dubbing to help add durability. Once you reach your thread, secure, taking several thread wraps both in front, as well as behind your wire, and helicoptering the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush out the body to give it a nice, buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and grab some silicon legs. Here I'm using black and blue, but purple would work just as well. Secure the legs to one side of your fly and then to the other side. You can use one loose wrap to help position it in place before securing it tightly. With this complete, we'll snip the legs to length. I like to cut them to be just about the length of our hook bend. However, if you want more movement in your pattern, you can always leave them longer. We'll then create another dubbing noodle and carefully wrap this in between our legs to ensure that we don't trap them beneath, doing so until we reach the head of the fly. At which point we'll grab some black biots, once again placing them into a V formation and carefully securing them to the top of our fly. You can either have them sit upright by doing a pinch wrap or use a thicker thread to help lay them flat. Snip the excess free, rotating your fly over and grabbing some CDC. Here I'm using tan. Pull free a small clump and measure it to reach just about to the hook point. Transfer your measurement and secure it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll snip the tag ends free rotating our fly back over and creating another dubbing noodle to help cover our tag ends as well as help give the materials a brush back look. Finish with a thread wrap just in front of the dubbing, securing everything in place by whip finishing. And this is the Batman Stonefly, a pattern recommended by one of our viewers and in its black and blue color will work exceptionally well in dark waters and would work excellent as a dropper pattern to help draw attention to your smaller midges. And if you'd like to pick some up, you can find them on my website linked in the comments section. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This buggy attractor pattern can help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, continue wrapping until you reach the bend of your hook, and grab some green synthetic dubbing. Align the fibers and secure them to the back of the fly. Continue securing the synthetic fibers forward until you reach your hook eye. At which point, we'll snip the excess free and cut our tail to length. Next, we'll grab some small wire, here I'm using green, as well as some clear, hollow tubing. Insert the wire into your tubing and secure it by inserting it into the bead and wrapping it tightly to the hook shank, continuing to do so until we reach our tag, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction and create a smooth body wrapping towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab our wire and tubing and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals. This is a cool technique that creates an interesting segmentation and will take on the color of whatever underbody you decide to place below it. Continue to wrap it forward until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping 
the excess free, at which point we'll whip finish, snip our thread free, swapping it out for a fluorescent orange thread. We'll then grab some more dubbing. This time I've mixed in some copper, green, and olive. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this just behind our bead, saving a little bit of room at the head of the fly. And then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Once complete, we'll create a dubbing loop and grab some squirrel dubbing. Insert this into our dubbing loop, spin it up, and begin wrapping it around the head of the fly, brushing the fibers backwards as you go. Secure with your thread, and snip the excess free. Whip finishing to add a hot spot to the head of our fly. Snip your thread free, and this is an attractor pattern that I love to use for pocket water trout. It doesn't mimic anything in particular, but agitates water and attracts attention. And adding a small midge behind it can be a deadly combination. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. With fall fishing rapidly approaching, today we're going to be tying a fly pattern that I like to use to represent October caddis. We'll start off with some black thread, securing it to our hook shank, and inserting some lead-free wire to secure a matte black bead in place. Helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll grab some vinyl ribbing. Here I'm using orange. Secure it tightly with your thread, wrapping back well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll grab some orange hair's ear, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this forward in closed touching spirals, starting with a smaller amount of dubbing and creating a transition as we move forward, adding or removing any extra dubbing as needed. Continue wrapping forward, leaving some room at the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab our vinyl D-rib and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, allowing some of the hairs here to show through, and continue to do so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure. Snip the excess free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Next, we'll grab a partridge feather strip a few sections free and secure it to the underside of our fly. This will make up our legs of the October caddis. Secure it tightly with your thread and use your fingers to spin it around the hook shank. Snip the excess free and grab a brown feather. We'll secure the brown feather to the side of our fly to mimic a wing case. Secure tightly, snip the excess free and do the same to the other side and grab some gold crystal flash. We'll select about five to six fibers, fold them over on themselves, and secure them to the head of our fly. This will help create a little hot spot that mimics a wing case. Snip the excess free and grab a pheasant tail. We'll strip a few pheasant tail fibers free and secure them to the side of our fly. With this complete, we'll snip the excess free and grab some more orange hairs here along with some orange ice dubbing. We'll mix these two together, create another dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this in front of our wing case, stopping just short of the head of our fly. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look and grab some black hair's ear, creating a dubbing noodle and wrapping it just behind our bead. At which point, we'll whip finish to secure everything in place, snip the excess thread free, and brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. It works particularly well when swung through the current without a bead. However, it can also be tied with a bead for faster currents. And if you have October caddis in your water, I'd highly suggest giving it a try this fall. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We'll be tying up the world famous Frenchie. However, it's going to be one of my favorite variations to use in the fall. To start, we'll insert a lead free wire into our bead, secure it in place, and helicopter the excess free. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping until we reach the bend of the hook and grab some white feathers. Strip a few feathers free and measure them to be about half the length of your hook shank. Secure them tightly to the back of the fly and continue to secure the feathers forward to help build up a transition. Snip the feathers free and secure the tag ends. We'll then grab some brassy wire. Here I like to use amber. 
insert the wire into the bead to help further secure it, wrapping over it with your thread and continuing to secure it back towards your tail. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly. Here, you can keep the body thin, or do as I'm doing and build up a body transition in order to add a slight bit of bulk. At which point, we'll begin to wrap our wire forward in open spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. In order to add some flash, we'll grab some hollow tinsel, here I'm using silver, inserting into the bead and securing it tightly in place, wrapping back towards the beginning of our wire wraps, followed by some dubbing. Here I'm using ice dubbing in a mix of green, copper, and chartreuse. Create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this forward until you reach your bead, ensuring that your dubbing ball remains tight and tightening or removing any extra dubbing as needed. With this complete, we'll fold over our hollow tinsel and secure it using our thread at the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is a productive variation of the Frenchie that I like to use to imitate blue wing olives. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you fish lakes and ponds, this larva is a must have. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, inserting a lead free wire into our bead in order to secure it in place. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping your thread backwards towards the bend of the hook. We'll then grab some mop fly material. Here I'm using galaxy mop in the color olive. Fold it over on itself in order to make it wider and secure it to the back of the fly, ensuring that you secure it tightly so it doesn't move around. You can do so by taking several tight wraps on top of it, as well as a few behind it to help pinch it in place. With your tail secure, next we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using hair's ear in the color olive, create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals, doing so just in front of the tail to build up some bulk. With this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then wrap our thread forward and grab a turkey tail. Snip the ends free and secure it to the top of your fly and continue doing so back towards our dubbing. At which point, we'll grab some more hairs here, create another dubbing noodle and wrap this just in front of our turkey tail. Once again, wrapping it in place to help build up some bulk. With this complete, we'll fold over our turkey tail and secure it just in front of our dubbing, wrapping forward slightly and folding it backwards, securing on top of it to reorient it facing back towards our tail and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll then grab some biots, here I'm using brown, fold them so they mimic a leg and secure it to the side of your fly, doing so to one side and repeating this process to the other side. Secure them tightly in place Snip the excess free, adding some more dubbing to cover up the tag ends and build up some bulk. Once again, folding our turkey tail over, securing in place, folding it back over and securing it on top of itself. We'll then repeat this process, securing some more legs, snipping the excess free and repeat this process again. However, this time, we'll orient our legs to face forward towards the head of the fly. Secure them tightly, first to one side of the fly and then to the other. Snip your excess free. Create another dubbing noodle and wrap this between our two biots, finishing at the head of the fly. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Before folding your turkey tail over once more, and securing it at the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and this is an extremely buggy pattern that I like to use in lakes and ponds in order to mimic a dragonfly larva. It works exceptionally well used with some sinking line and strips slowly back to you and I'd highly suggest giving it a try. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. 
and I will see you in the next one. If you fish for panfish, this fly is for you. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap your thread free. We'll continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook, and grab some black marabou. We'll tie in the tips, securing it tightly to the back of the fly, and continue securing it to the hook shank for our next steps. To help hold the marabou in place, keeping it propped upright, I like to add a few thread wraps behind it, once again securing on top to hold it in place. We'll then grab some crystal flash, here I'm using chartreuse, securing it to one side of our fly tightly, folding it over, and securing it to the other. Continue securing towards the back of the fly. Snip the excess free, and grab some chartreuse marabou. We'll strip some of the marabou free, measuring it to be a bit longer than our black marabou, and secure it to the hook shank, allowing it to spin slightly, doing so to add a little bit of character and a hot spot to our tail. Secure the excess tightly in place, and whip finish at the head of the fly. Snip your thread free, and grab some foam. Here I'm using loco foam in the color peacock. Cut your foam into a small triangle section, poking a small hole in the middle, pushing it over the hook shank towards the tail of your fly. With this complete, we'll reattach our thread, snip the excess free, and grab some silicone legs. We'll grab three strands, securing them towards the head of our fly using our thread. Ensure that they're secured tightly. Once again, whip finishing at the head of the fly, and snip your thread free. At which point, we'll trim our legs to length, leaving them quite long, and add some super glue both to the foam and body of the fly. With this complete, we'll start to fold over our foam and position the legs to spread them out before clamping down on the foam. Once happy, squeeze the foam tightly and hold it in place to secure. We'll then trim the legs to our final length. And remember, the longer you leave them, the more action they'll have. And this is a triangle bug, a topwater slider that's known to work exceptionally well for panfish, but can also work for bass. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying one of my favorite caddis larvae. To start, secure some black thread to your hook shank and snap the excess free and grab some white ostrich hurl. Grab a small clump of three and secure it to the back of your fly, securing tightly up the hook shank until you reach your hook point, at which point snap the excess free and trim your tail to length. We'll then grab some fine mono, but you can always grab some fluoro tippet. Secure that to the hook shank, wrapping towards the tail, returning your thread to the hook point once complete, and grab some thin skin. Here I'm using clear, Cut your thin skin into a wedge and secure it to the top of the fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, grab some olive dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, stopping once we reach the hook point. And brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Next up, we'll grab a turkey tail and pluck out a single fiber. You can see that it leaves us with a nice leg-like appearance. Measure this to be about the size of our dubbing and secure it to one side of your fly. Snip the excess free and repeat this process to the other side. We'll then grab some black hairs ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this in front of our legs. Once complete, we'll brush it out once again to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then grab another turkey leg and secure it to the side of the fly, this time making it a little bit longer than the previous leg, and snip the excess free. Add some more hairs ear dubbing and repeat this step one more time. Snip your excess free and finish it off with a little more dubbing. And of course, brush it out to give it that nice buggy look. Fold your thin skin over and secure it to the head of the fly. Once complete, snip your excess free, grab your mono wire, and begin wrapping this forward in open spirals, taking care not to trap any legs in the process. Continue wrapping the mono thread forward until you reach the hook eye, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Use a whip finisher to build up a small head 
and paint it over with some UV resin. And this is an extremely buggy caddis larvae. If you don't tie and would like to try this fly, we just restocked it on my website. You can pick it up in this variation or in an alternative tan. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This might just be the fastest sinking fly out there. To tie it, we'll start off with some tan thread. Secure it tightly to our hook shank and wrapping well into the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread slightly, grabbing some brown ostrich hurl. Strip some of the fibers free and secure it to the back of your fly. At which point, we'll wrap back up towards the head of the fly and grab some copper beads along with some silver. Here I'm using tungsten. You'll also need some monofilament wire. We'll use this mono to string several beads together like so. Add as many beads as you can to add weight, as well as segmentation to this fly pattern. Here I've opted to use one silver one as a hotspot. We'll start by securing our monofilament to the head of the fly, pulling the excess backwards and securing it, snip it free, and slide your beads forward. We'll secure each bead individually by wrapping over the top of it loosely and taking an extra securing wrap, continuing to do so until we reach the back of the fly. With this complete, we'll shift our mono forward and begin wrapping in between the beads once more, finishing once we reach the head of the fly. This will help ensure that everything's locked together tightly. Secure the mono tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our ostrich hurl and begin palmering this forward in between the beads, being careful not to break it in the process. Continue to do so for each segment, finishing once you reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll secure it tightly in place and snip the excess free. Brushing everything backwards, cleaning up the head and whip finishing to hold everything together. Snip your thread free and brush it out in a downward motion to give it a nice buggy look and ensure that no fibers are trapped within our beads. You can then wet your fingers and drag it in a downward motion helping to brush the fibers downwards and keeping them out of the way for our next steps. We'll grab some UV resin. Here I'm using thin. Start by adding a small layer to your beads to help lock everything in place. Take your time with this to ensure you don't get it in your ostrich hurl. This is where a rotating vise becomes particularly helpful. You can still work around that by using a heavier UV resin or adding layers at a slower pace. Continue to add resin until you build up a bubble on the back side of the fly locking everything in place with a UV light once happy. And this is a variation of the heavy hitter, a unique fly pattern that despite its size, still sinks faster than most flies, making it an excellent small dropper to use in tail waters where you might be fishing a scud and a small midge. And we just so happen to hit 150,000 subscribers on this channel. And as a thank you, if you comment hashtag flies below, the selected winner can choose two dozen flies off of my website. Thank you all for helping the channel reach this milestone, and there's plenty more to come. Today, we're gonna to be tying a maggot that can be used to catch anything from trout to panfish. To start, we'll grab some monofilament line, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Set your line to the side and grab some clear thin skin. Cut it into a wedge and secure it to the top of the fly, wrapping back towards our line. Next, we'll create a dubbing loop, once again, wrapping back towards the tail. Set your dubbing loop aside and grab some waxworm colored dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this forward in closed touching spirals until we reach roughly the hook point, creating a transition in the process. We'll make a mix of hair's ear in natural and black, insert this into our dubbing loop, spin it up and brush it free. With that complete, we can begin wrapping it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. Secure and snip the excess free. Create another dubbing mix, this time with natural and brown hair's ear. Spinning up a dubbing noodle and wrapping it around the head of our fly. Take a couple securing wraps, 
and brush everything out in a downward motion to give it a nice buggy look. Afterwards, fold over your thin skin and secure it tightly to the head of the fly, snipping the excess free. And grab your mono wire and begin wrapping this forward in open spirals, applying a significant amount of pressure in order to create a segmentation. Once we've reached our thread, we'll secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Use a Sharpie to color in your thread and whip finish to create a prominent head. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a maggot that could represent anything from a caddis larva to a scud and even a wax worm. For all you fly tires out there, we're currently holding a competition on our Discord to see who can tie the best larva. The winner will get a $25 gift certificate and have their pattern featured on the channel. If you'd like to join in, check out the link in the comments to visit our server. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying up a realistic caddis pattern, and if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. We'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, snapping the excess free, and wrapping well into the bend of our hook. Here, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the hook point, and grab some clear monofilament wire. Secure the wire to the side of your hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of the hook. Set it aside, wrap back up towards your hook point, and grab some pheasant tail. We'll strip away one fiber, securing it to the side of the fly, and wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. Once again returning your thread, once complete. Repeat this process to the other side. You want to ensure that the pheasant tail is strictly on one side of your hook shank. Once again bring your thread forward and start to build up a body transition. Doing so by wrapping all the way forward up towards our hook point, reversing your directions and wrapping back just about to our starting point. Repeating this process several times will help you build up a smooth transition. You can make this as thick or as thin as you'd like, but having some sort of transition will help in our next step. We'll then grab some latex, securing it to the side of our fly, and once again wrapping back towards the tail of our hook. Bring your thread forward, ensuring that you cover as much latex as possible in the process, and continue building up the body transition. With this complete, we'll finish with our thread just in front of the hook point, Grab our latex and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, allowing the latex to overlap itself slightly that'll continue building up the body transition and also give the pattern a segmented, grubby look. Continue this process until you reach your thread. Once happy, we'll secure it tightly in place with our thread and snip the excess free by pulling your latex tight and snipping it off with your scissors. Cover up your tag ends, wrapping back on the latex slightly. Next, we'll grab our pheasant tail, folding them over and using our fingers to hold them to the side of the fly. We'll secure it tightly in place with our thread. Grab our monofilament wire and wrapping it forward in open spirals. This will help secure our pheasant tail in place and further its segmented look. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure it in place and snip the excess free, doing so with the pheasant tail as well. Next, we'll grab a partridge feather, strip away some fibers, and secure them to the underside of our fly, helping to create the legs of our pattern. Snip the excess free and grab some dubbing. Here, we're using a green chartreuse, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this just in front of our latex body. Before moving forward, we'll color in the back of our fly using a brown sharpie. Once happy, brush out your dubbing slightly to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then grab some monofilament fishing line, cut away a small piece, and use a lighter to carefully burn out some eyes. You can do so by carefully heating up the mono with a lighter while avoiding burning it completely. Start by doing this on one side of the mono, and then the other. The trick is to use a piece that's small enough generally about an inch long section, that'll help ensure that you don't have too much excess material. With your monofilament eyes complete, 
we'll secure them to the upper side of our fly using our thread. Doing so by wrapping around it in a figure eight pattern, ensuring that it's oriented in the right direction before locking it in too tight. Next, we'll grab some thin skin, cut them out into a wing-like shape, and secure them to one side of our fly. This will mimic the wing case of the emerging caddis. Secure it tightly in place, and do so to the other side. With this complete, we'll create another dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this just in front of our wing case before brushing it out to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then grab another section of our pheasant tail and secure it to the upper side of our fly, starting by securing one piece and then another. We'll secure these both tightly in place before snipping the excess free. Once complete, wrap back on it slightly to give it a brush back look and create another dubbing noodle that we'll start wrapping forward until we reach the eyes. We'll then whip finish to hold everything tightly in place and add a little bit of UV resin to add some durability to our pattern. Fix in place with a UV light and grab a pair of tweezers to bend our legs to give them a better look. And finish by coloring in the eyes with a black sharpie to add in a little bit more detail. And this is a caddis pattern that looks exceptionally good in the fly box but does take some work to complete. But if you're into fly tying, it can be a fun project. And I'd highly encourage you to give it a try. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This underutilized fly pattern is one of the best at catching brook trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some pink thread, secure it to our hook shank, and insert some lead-free wire to hold our bead in place. Helicopter the excess free, and continue wrapping until you reach the hook bend. Next, we'll grab some pink crystal flash, select about four strands, and secure them to the back of the fly. Continue securing the crystal flash up the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some small wire, here I'm using rust, insert it into the bead, securing it to the hook shank, and wrapping until we reach our tail. We'll then grab some squirrel, this one was sent to me by Carson R, so thank you for sending that along. Strip some of the natural fibers free and create some dubbing. We'll then create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it forward until we reach our bead. Doing so in closed touching spirals and building up a transition that increases as we move towards the head of the fly. Continuing to add and tighten the dubbing as needed. Once our thread reaches the head of the fly, grab your wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals counter wrapping the dubbing. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a pink synthetic UV dubbing. Create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it around the head of our fly. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is the pink squirrel, an extra buggy pattern that works particularly well to catch brook trout. You can tie it up with the materials below or submit a custom order form on my website and I'll tie some up for you. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you're looking to get some aggressive dry fly action in the fall, then this fly is for you to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, snap the excess free, and continue wrapping well into the bend of our hook. We'll then grab some tan elk hair, snip a small clump free, and clean out the under fibers before inserting into a hair stacker and tamping it down. This will help align our fibers so they're all evenly spaced. Wrapping our thread around it once, before securing it to the back of our fly. This will help prevent the elk hair from spinning around our hook. With this complete, we'll use our thread to secure it tightly in place. And if your tail starts to sink down, you can do as I did, adding a single thread wrap behind it. Once happy, we'll continue to secure the elk hair forward before snipping the excess free. Cover up your tag ends and wrap your thread back towards the tail. We'll then grab some dubbing, 
here I've selected to use some ice dubbing, as well as a dry fly dubbing, in order to add some buoyancy. Mix them together to create a dubbing blend. We'll then create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals, trying to build up a transition as we move forward. We'll start off with dubbing about one third up our hook shank and grab some more elk hair. Once again, using the hair stacker, measure your hair to reach just about to the tail and secure it to the top of the fly using the same technique as before. Once again, to ensure that it remains on the top of the fly. Secure tightly, taking some looser thread wraps over the top of it to help brush it back and before cranking down on the excess fibers to secure it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and cover up your tag ends. We'll then grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using gold, securing three strands to one side, folding it over and securing three more slightly in the opposite direction. With this complete, we'll create another dubbing noodle, wrapping it over the top of our elk's hair. Continue wrapping forward, maintaining an increase in the body transition. With this complete, we'll grab some more elk's hair, repeating the process just as we've done before. Securing the elk hair to the top of the fly, snipping the excess free, securing your tag ends, and grabbing more crystal flash to secure over the top of it. Finishing with another dubbing noodle, and once again wrapping it forward to cover up these tag ends and build up a body transition, stopping just short of the head of the fly. Here, we'll repeat this process once more, building up a prominent wing that'll be highly buoyant in the water. Also, if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And for those of you who don't tie and would like to pick one up, and if you don't win, but would still like to support the channel while stocking up your fly box for the fall, you can visit my website that's linked in the description and the comments below. With our final wing put in place, we'll grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using brown, set it to the side, create another dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals, completing this cone shape at the head of our fly. With this complete, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. Secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the saddle hackle, trying to prevent from trapping any fibers facing forward, and snip the excess free. Grab a pheasant tail, strip a few fibers free, and secure them to the head of the fly. Secure the two fibers facing forward and use your bobbin or your fingers to help separate them. Once happy, we'll use our thread to secure it tightly in place Snip the excess free and use a whip finisher to build up a prominent but small head. Snip your thread free and brush out your dubbing slightly to give it a nice buggy look. And this is the October Caddis, an extremely large dry fly that you'll see hatching in the fall. This is one I like to tie some droppers under like an October Caddis nymph. And if you'd like to win it, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you fish for trout in the winter, this fly is a must have. We'll start off with some olive thread, snap the excess free, grabbing some brassy wire. Here I'm using chartreuse. Insert the wire into our glass bead and secure it tightly. Continue securing our wire to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook. If you want to see the exact materials used in any of these patterns, you can check them out in the comments below. Once we reach the back of the fly, we'll reverse directions and start building up a thread transition towards our bead. Next, grab your wire and begin to wrap this in open spirals towards our thread, ensuring that each wrap is evenly spaced. Secure the wire by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. To increase durability as well as shine of this pattern, you can coat the back of it in UV resin. Once happy, fix in place with a UV light and grab some chartreuse crystal flash. Fold over the flash, creating two or four loops, whatever your preferences are, and secure them just behind the bead. Ensure you secure it tightly and snip the excess free. So we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using one with some UV fibers. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it just in front of our crystal flash wing. Once happy, secure everything in place by whip finishing and snip your thread free. Finally, brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. 
I like to use this fly both in the winter as well as the spring months. If you don't tie and want to try this out for yourself, you can pick it up from my website below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you're new to fly tying, then this pattern is for you. To start, we'll grab some extra small wire. Here I'm using black. Insert it into our bead and secure tightly with your thread back towards the tail and finishing just before you hit the bend of the hook. Once complete, reversing your thread's direction back towards the bead. Next, we'll grab some vinyl ribbing. Here I'm using the size midge in olive. Secure tightly to your hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Bringing your thread forward once again. With this complete, we'll begin to wrap our vinyl wire forward, doing so in closed touching spirals. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our vinyl ribbing and snip the excess free. Grab your black wire and begin to wrap this forward in the grooves of our vinyl wire. Take your time on the first wraps and the remaining ones will fall in place easily, continuing to do so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure, once again taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. And this is a beginner friendly midge pattern that also makes a great pattern for pocket water trout. If you don't tie and would like to try it out for yourself, you can find it on my website. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'll be tying one of my favorite overlooked flies. To start, we'll attach some black thread to our hook shank, secure it tightly, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook and reverse your thread's direction back towards the hook eye, at which point we'll grab some brassy wire, here I'm using amber, secure it tightly to your hook shank and wrap back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread back to the head of the fly and grab some more brassy wire, this time I'm using copper. Once again, securing your copper wire to your hook shank and wrapping back towards the bend of the hook. Once complete, return your thread forward, taking thread wraps to smooth out our body as we work our way to the hook eye. Whip finish if you have a rotary vise and set your thread to the side. We'll begin by grabbing our copper wire and using our vise's rotary function to carefully wrap it up the body, doing so in closed touching spirals and continue to do so until you reach your thread. To make sure you don't leave any gaps, one simple thing to do is to position your wire slightly backwards so that the previous wrap helps guide it in place. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking a couple thread wraps and helicoptering the excess free. Next, grab your amber wire and begin to wrap this forward and begin to wrap this forward in open spirals. This adds a little bit of texture and character to our body. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicopter the excess free. Secure your wires in place by wrapping back on them slightly, and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a tan, synthetic blend, create a dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap this around the head of our fly. And brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and wrap back on the dubbing slightly, creating a base for our next step. We'll then grab a partridge feather, pull the fibers backwards, and snip away a small section, leaving us with a small triangle that we can use as a tie-in point. Secure it to the head of the fly, and use a pair of hackle pliers to begin to spin it around the head of our fly. We'll take two wraps, carefully positioning our second wrap in front of the previous. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. Use your thread to clean up the head section and pull any fibers back to ensure you don't trap them. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and paint over the head with some UV resin. 
This will add durability to our fly, as well as improve the look of our head section. And this is a wire body soft hackle. I like to use this color variation to represent caddis, and it works extremely well as a dropper tied behind a dry fly. The wire gives it just enough weight to sink, yet is light enough to flow in the current and not sink your dry fly. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Stop! Overlooking the successful fly pattern. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. We'll then secure our bead in place, leaving plenty of room at the head of the fly. Doing so by inserting some lead free wire and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then continue laying a thread base to the bend of the hook and grab a partridge feather. Strip a few fibers free, measure them to be about the length of the hook shank and secure them to the back of the fly. Continue securing the fibers forward until you reach your bead at which point we'll snip the excess free and grab some small wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the copper wire into your bead and secure it tightly in place and wrapping back towards your tail. At which point we'll advance our thread forward, leaving a smooth thread base for our next steps. Once we reach our bead, we'll whip finish and set our thread to the side. We'll then begin wrapping our wire forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by hand. However, if you have a rotary vise, this makes it far easier. Continue wrapping your wire forward, stopping just short of your bead. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using synthetic in the color rust, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it just behind our bead. Whip finish. Snip your thread free and reattach it at the head of the fly. Here, we'll create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it just in front of our bead. This time, we'll create it slightly larger. And with this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and grab a partridge feather. Here I've opted to use a white one. Pull your fibers backwards, exposing the tips, and snip this free, creating a small triangle that we'll use as a tie-in point. We'll then secure it tightly to the head of our fly, grab our feather, brushing the fibers backwards and beginning to hackle it around the head of our fly, doing so for about one to two turns. At which point, we'll secure it with our thread carefully trying to avoid trapping any fibers underneath. Snip the excess free. Use your fingers to brush the fibers backwards and wrap your thread slightly over the top of them. This will help give them a nice brush back look. We'll then whip finish, holding everything in place and building up a small head section. And this is one of my favorite soft tackles to use for pocket water brook trout. They find it hard to resist the colors as is, and the soft tackle adds some extra movement to make it even more enticing. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This tiny fly can produce huge results. To tie it, we'll start off with some tan thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. We'll then grab some small wire. Here I'm using copper. Securing it to our hook shank and wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back towards the head of the fly. And build up a body transition to help add some bulk. You can do so by wrapping back towards the tail of the fly, stopping just short of your starting point. Reversing your thread back up to the head of the fly and repeating this step until you reach the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab our copper wire and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, ensuring that each wrap is evenly spaced, doing so until you reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering 
the excess free. Next, we'll grab some tam foam, trim it into a small wedge, and use your thread to secure it to the head of the fly, ensuring that it's positioned on top of the hook shank. Continue securing with your thread until it's nice and snug. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using the synthetic brown and wrap it just behind your foam, continuing to add and tighten the dubbing as needed. Finishing with your thread just in front of your foam. Secure everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and of course brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is the chocolate emerger. It's made to imitate any small emerging insect and can work incredibly well behind a larger dry fly. I'd highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly pattern only requires one material and is sure to catch you some fish. To tie it, we'll insert a lead-free wire into our bead, secure it tightly, and helicopter the excess free. At which point, we'll lay down a thread base, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook, before wrapping forward, back up towards the bead. We'll then grab some egg yarn, here I'm using orange, and secure it tightly to the head of our fly. With this secured, we'll add some extra bulk by wrapping our egg yarn around the hook shank, and fold it over to create a loop. Secure the loop in place using your thread, securing both in front of the yarn as well as behind, before snipping it free, leaving some extra material. Using this material to create a veil, spreading it over our loop, brushing it backwards, and securing it tightly in place, and whip finish to hold it all together. And this is a simple egg pattern that only takes a couple seconds to tie, so tie it up in all your favorite colors and it will be sure to catch you some fish. And the best part about it is the more chewed up it gets, the better it looks. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This natural pattern can help you catch some of those finicky fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some tan thread, secure it to your hook shank, we'll then grab some synthetic quills, secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping it back until we reach the bend of our hook, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction until we reach the head of the fly. We'll then grab some pheasant tail, select a few fibers and secure them to the head of our fly, once again wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. Continue back until you reach the head of the fly and then use your thread to build up a small body transition. Grabbing your pheasant tail once complete and beginning to wrap it forward until we reach the head of the fly. Doing so in closed touching spirals. Once you reach the head of the fly, we'll secure using our thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll grab our synthetic biot and begin to wrap it forward towards the head of the fly. Once again, doing so in closed touching spirals and securing it in place with your thread. Snip the excess free and paint it over with some UV resin. This will add both durability as well as shine to our body. Fix in place with a UV light and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic hair's ear, create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this just behind the eye of our hook. Once complete, brush everything backwards and take a few thread wraps in front of your dubbing. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and grab a CDC feather. Here I'm using tan. Snip away a few of the fibers, creating a triangle tie-in point that we can use to attach it to the head of our fly. Brushing the fibers backwards and hackling it around the head of our fly. You can do about one to two turns. With this complete, we'll secure it in place with our thread and snip the excess free. Brushing everything back and whip finishing to hold it in place. And this is a quilled soft hackle. It's an underutilized and incredibly productive pattern that works particularly well when there's a caddis hatch that's gonna happen later in the day. I often tie these behind a heavy nymph or swing it through the current much like you would a wet fly. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today we'll be creating one of my favorite variations of a popular streamer pattern in my home waters. And if you'd like to win it, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. We'll start off with some black thread, securing it to our hook shank and wrapping towards the bend of our hook. 
Here, we'll grab a red feather, strip away a small clump, and secure it to the back of the fly in order to create a small hotspot. Secure it tightly to the hook shank, securing the excess tightly to our hook shank. With this complete, we'll grab some easy body, here in the color pearl, slide it over our hook shank toward the back of the fly, and use your thread to secure it in place. Here I used a black thread, however if you want a cleaner look, you can use a white or add a hot spot using red. Secure it tightly. Snip away some of the excess before whip finishing to secure it in place, and snip your thread free. We'll then add some UV resin to further secure it, fixing it in place with a UV light. Snip away some of the body, exposing the hook eye, reattaching your thread towards the head of the fly, and secure the body in place, leaving some room at the head of the fly for our next steps. With this complete, we'll grab a mallard flank, stripping away some of the excess feathers, and rolling it in your fingers to get a tapered shape. Position this over the top of the fly, and secure it in place using your thread. Snip the excess free, and secure the tag end tightly in place. Next, we'll grab another clump of our red feather, securing it to the underside of our fly in order to create the throat. Secure tightly. Snip your excess free, and use your thread to carefully cover up the tag ends. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free, painting over the head with some UV resin to add some shine and durability to our pattern before fixing in place with a UV light. And this is my variation of the pattern known as Joe's Smelt, a popular fly pattern used in Maine to imitate the smelt runs in the spring, but is also used in the fall for trout and salmon as an attractor pattern. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This wire worm is so simple and effective, it might actually get banned. To tie it, we won't even start out with thread, we'll actually lay down a base of super glue, followed by some medium red wire. Start your wire well into the bend of the hook, and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, trying to ensure that no gaps are left behind. Continue to do this until you reach the eye of your hook, at which point you can cut it free and super glue it in place or secure on some red thread. Use your thread to help secure the wire in place, securing both in front, as well as behind your wire and helicoptering the excess free. At which point we'll whip finish to hold the thread in place. After which we'll coat it in some UV resin to add some shine and durability to our pattern. Next, we'll use the back of our scissors to cut the excess wire free. You can also do this in the front as well and grab some more thread in a hot spot color. Here I've selected to use pink However, you can use any color you choose, and continue building up a prominent hot spot just slightly forward of the middle of your fly. You can make this as large or as small as you'd like. Once happy, we'll whip finish, snip our thread free, and paint it over with some UV resin to add some shine and durability to our thread wraps. Fix in place with the UV light, and finish coating the red wire of your worm again to add durability and shine to our pattern. And this is a wired blood worm. And while it can be tied without thread wraps, in doing so, technically, it wouldn't even be a fly. And while it doesn't have as much movement as other worm patterns, it is one of the most durable ones out there, and still can trick some fish. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a 2,000 year old fly pattern that is potentially the earliest recorded in literature. To start, we'll grab some black thread, continue wrapping to the back of the hook, and grab some scarlet yarn. We'll secure a small amount of yarn to the back of the fly, and snip the excess free. We'll then attach another clump of yarn to the head of our fly, secure it tightly, and wrap back towards the tag. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly and begin wrapping your yarn forward in closed touching spirals, creating an even body until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the yarn and snipping the excess furry. Secure the yarn in place and clean up the head slightly before the next step. Grab two wax colored feathers 
Place them together, measure it to length, and secure it to the head of the fly. We want them to stick out just slightly past the tag end. Once complete, snip the excess free and whip finish to cover your tag ends. Snip your excess thread free and add some UV resin to the head of the fly to add some durability as well as shine. Secure with UV light and this is my variation of a fly pattern that was potentially the first pattern ever recorded. And if you would like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up an attractor caddis pattern that you should add to your fly box. We'll start off with some fluorescent green thread. Secure it to our hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of our hook, and create a small buildup towards the back of the fly, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back up to the head of the fly, whip finish, and snip your thread free. We'll then grab some UV resin, here I'm using fluorescent green, paint over the thread buildup that we just created, and smooth it out. Once happy, secure in place with the UV light. With this complete, we'll swap out to an olive thread, securing it to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We'll then grab some small wire, here I'm using rust, insert it into our bead and begin wrapping backwards until we reach our hot spot. At which point, we'll set our wire to the side and bring our thread forward to the hook point. We'll then grab some pheasant tail, strip a few fibers free and secure them tightly to the hook shank. Continue securing, wrapping backwards toward your hot spot. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread forward, grabbing our pheasant tail and beginning to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until we reach the bead. Secure with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the pheasant tail and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our wire and begin counter wrapping the pheasant tail in open spirals, once again doing so until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some synthetic dubbing, here I'm using green, create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just behind our bead, leaving a bit of room at the head of the fly at which point we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull in the excess fibers free and grab some hair's ear. Here I'm using a caddis green. Create another dubbing noodle, this time looser than the previous one, and begin spinning it around the head of your fly. Pull everything backwards, add one more securing wrap, and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is a pattern I like to use as an attractor during the summer months. It does an excellent job at imitating caddis in their pupa and larval stages. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly was meant to catch huge fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some pink thread, snip the excess free, and continue wrapping slightly into the bend of our hook at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back up to the head of the fly and grab some pink flashaboo. Secure about five strands to the hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. Returning your thread to the head of the fly once complete, at which point we'll begin wrapping our crystal flash forward in closed touching spirals, doing so to add some flash to our hook shank. Continue doing so until you reach your thread at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the crystal flash and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some rabbit strips, here I'm using pink, whip finish and snip your thread free, at which point we can remove our hook, invert it and insert it into our zonker strip with the hook point facing towards the fur. Once complete, we'll reposition our hook into our vise and reattach our thread. We'll then grab our zonker strip, positioning it over the hook shank, taking care to brush any excess fur out of the way. We'll then use our thread to secure the zonker strip to the head of the fly, taking several tight thread wraps, both behind as well as in front of the zonker strip, at which point we can whip finish to secure everything in place and snip our thread free, painting it over with some UV resin to add some shine 
and durability to the head of our fly and fix it in place with a UV light. We'll then grab a piece of wire, insert it through the hook eye, removing the hook from the vise once complete. At which point, we'll swap out to a different hook, resecure our thread, and snip the excess free. In order to secure our bead in place, we'll grab a piece of lead free wire, insert it into the bead, and secure it tightly using our thread. Helicopter the excess free. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our thread all the way to the bend of the hook. Here, we'll secure our wire tightly in place, measuring it to be a bit longer than our hook. Ensure that you use proper thread tension so that the wire can't be pulled free. Once you reach the head of the fly, snip the excess wire free using the back of your scissors and continue securing the wire tightly in place. I like to help lock it in place by taking thread wraps underneath the wire, followed by a few additional tight wraps on top. Once happy, we'll grab our zonker strip, fold it over, and secure it to the back of our fly. Once again, brushing any excess hair out of the way and taking several thread wraps to secure it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll fold the zonker strip over, wrap up to the head of the fly, and begin palmering your body with the zonker strip, doing so in close touching spirals until you reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the zonker strip, and snipping the excess free. Take a few additional securing wraps, and grab a piece of tan barred zonker strip, inverting your fly if you have a rotating vise, and securing it to the underside. Snip the excess free, measure and snip it to be just a bit shorter than your pink zonker strip. We'll then whip finish to secure our thread in place and snip it free, removing the fly from the vise and poking the hook through the underside of our tan zonker strip. This will help keep it positioned in place. With this complete, resecure your thread to the head of the fly and grab some lateral scale. Here I'm using pearl. Grab one strand, position it to the side of your fly and secure it tightly in place, doing the same to the other side. Once secure, snip the excess free and create a dubbing loop by doubling your thread over and wrapping over the top of it. We'll then grab some pink ice dubbing inserting it into our dubbing loop, followed by some UV white ice dubbing. We'll then spin up our dubbing loop and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Once happy, pull all the fibers backwards and begin hackling it around the head of your fly, doing so in closed touching spirals until you reach the head of your fly. Once complete, we'll secure the dubbing loop in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the thread free, brushing it out once complete to ensure there's no fibers trapped beneath. And with this complete, we'll take a thread wrap in front of the dubbing and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and paint it over with some UV resin to add some extra durability. Secure with UV light, and this is the Dalai Lama, a fly that's known to be particularly successful for catching large West Coast fish. And this particular variation is one of my friend's favorites to use for bull trout. I'd give it away, however, that this one is going in my personal fly box for an upcoming trip. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly is an absolute game changer and if you want to find out how you can win a few, stick around to the end of the video. To start this pattern, we'll grab an articulated hook shank pack and begin with the smallest size, starting by securing a white marabou feather. Measure it to be a little bit longer than your hook shank and secure it tightly in place. Snip your excess free. Secure your tag ends wrapping to the back of the fly. We'll then grab a minnow body, here I'm using white, with some UV fibers worked in. We'll strip a section free and secure this to the back of our fly. Snip your excess free. 
and wrap forward to the head of the shank. Grabbing your minnow body, brushing the fibers backwards and beginning to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals. Securing once you reach your thread. Do so by taking some thread wraps both in front as well as behind our material and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything tightly in place, snip our thread free and grab the next largest hook shank. Insert this into the eye of the other hook shank, snap it in place and remove the old one from the vise. We'll then secure the next hook shank, once again securing our thread tightly in place. You want to make sure that the section that's doubled over is secured snugly to the upper part of the hook shank. This way, the trailing fly won't be able to come loose. We'll secure our minnow body to the back of the fly, wrapping forward to the eye once complete. And once again, brush your fibers backwards and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our material and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything together Snip your thread free and grab the next hook shank in the set. Clip this into the eye, remove it from your vise, and resecure the longer hook shank to the vise. And repeat the exact same process as we have before. Securing your thread to the hook shank, wrapping to the back of the hook shank, securing your minnow body, and wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals until you reach the head of the shank. Secure, snip the excess free, and grab the next largest hook shank. And by now, I think you know the process. We'll repeat this once more to the largest hook shank in our set. Do your best not to trap any fibers beneath. However, if you do, as I've done on this hook shank, you can take a wire brush and brush everything free. And with this complete, we'll remove the tail section from the vise and replace it with a hook. We'll secure the thread to the hook shank Snip the excess free and continue wrapping slightly into our hook bend. This will add a base for our next steps. Return your thread to the hook point and grab some steel wire. Connect the steel wire to the tail that we just created, securing it to the hook shank. Ensure that you secure it tightly so it can't slip loose. Continue securing, wrapping back towards the eye of the hook shank. lifting it up and taking a few thread wraps behind it to help secure it in place. You want it to sit snug, but still be able to move around. With this complete, we'll continue securing the wire forward almost until we reach the hook eye. At which point, we'll fold the wire backwards and secure it back towards our tail. This will ensure that the wire can't slip out in the process. Snip your excess wire free using an old pair of scissors or the back of any scissors. Finish securing the wire in place, being careful not to cut your thread on the sharp ends, finishing at the back of the fly, and securing some more minnow body. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping our minnow body forward as we've done several times before, doing so until we reach our thread. at which point you can secure and snip the excess free. And whip finish to hold everything in place, snipping your thread free once complete. We'll then brush out our fly to ensure that there's no trapped fibers. This will help add a more consistent look to our fly pattern. With this complete, we'll select a pair of eyes, adding some UV resin or super glue to each side and securing the eye in place. You want to place these just slightly behind your hook eye. If you use UV resin, I'd suggest using a flexible UV resin and secure it in place once happy with a UV light. Although I would suggest using super glue. Next, grab your best pair of scissors as we'll be doing a lot of trimming. In this step, we'll begin at the head of the fly. We want the head of the fly to remain bulky, carefully trim away any excess fibers and round over the upper body section. Once you're happy with the shape, you can begin trimming up the tail. 
we want to trim this at an angle, so the smallest section is back towards my fingers. This is always the scariest part of any fly pattern like this. So take your time and only take out a little material at a time until you're comfortable with the process. You can always trim more, but can never add it back. Continue to rotate or remove it from your vise to continue this trimming process, doing so until we're happy with the shape. And when we're happy, we'll grab the tail, brush it out with a wire brush, snip it flat, and if you'd like, you can add a small notch to mimic a tail. And the finished product should look something like this. And this is an articulated game changer. It has an incredible movement in the water that mimics the natural forage almost perfectly. And it definitely lives up to its name. If you'd like to win a dozen of these flies, comment hashtag mainly flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be tying a nymph that's been used to win several fly fishing competitions. To tie it, you can grab a cock de leon feather, or I'm just using a black saddle hackle. Strip away a few feathers and secure them to the back of the fly. We want these to be about the same length as our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some pearl flashaboo, secure it to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and begin building up a body transition towards the head of the fly. Your finished product should look something like a carrot and it will help hold our bead in place. Once complete, we'll start wrapping our flash boo forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place Snip your thread free and paint over the body section with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix with a UV light and seal your wife's or your girlfriend's eyeshadow and mix it up with some thin UV resin. Add a small drop to cover the bead as well as the body section and hit it with a UV light. And this is the Gasolina, a highly productive fly pattern that is likely in every competition angler's fly box. And there's a reason for that, so I would highly suggest giving this one a shot. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This killer fly pattern can be used year-round. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some Sparkle Emerger yarn. Here I'm using cream. Grab a small tuft and secure it just behind the hook eye, wrapping back towards the bead. Snip the excess free and whip finish so we can remove our thread. Slide the bead towards the hook eye. Once complete, we'll use a pair of scissors to trim up the Sparkle yarn to our liking. Once you're happy with your results, reattach your thread and grab some small wire. Here I'm using olive. Start by inserting our wire into our bead and securing it tightly, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, we'll reverse directions and work our way back up towards the eye. We'll continue this process to build up a smooth body transition towards the bead. Once complete, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it in open spirals towards our thread, taking your time to ensure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and add a coat of UV resin. Blue wing olives can be found emerging year round and this pattern is simple enough to be tied in extremely small sizes. If you'd like to give it a try, you can pick it up on my website here, or comment hashtag flies down below for your chance to win. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Do you want a fly pattern that can catch fish worldwide, yet it's highly simple to tie? Well today, I'm going to show you how to make it. We'll start off with some black thread, and grab some small wire. Here I'm using copper. Strip a small section free, inserting it into your bead and securing it tightly to your hook shank. Continue securing until you reach the bend of your hook, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly and grab a roughed grouse feather. I like to use the red phase. However, you can also use pheasant tail. Secure the grouse to the hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the bend of the hook. 
With this complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and begin to build up a body transition towards the head of the fly. In order to do so, simply wrap back almost to your starting point, at which point you'll reverse your thread's direction, wrapping back up towards the head of the fly. Continue repeating this process until you reach the head of the fly, at which point we'll grab our roughed grouse feather and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals. Do note that grouse feathers are slightly shorter than pheasant tail, so you'll have to work with a smaller fly. Here, I'm using a size 14, which is about as small as you can go. Secure it tightly with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our wire and begin to wrap it in open spirals, counter wrapping our grouse feather. This will help add durability as well as a little bit of shine to our pattern. Once you reach your thread, secure tightly, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free and swap your thread out to your favorite hotspot color. Here I'm using orange, but pink or chartreuse are great alternatives. And whip finish to build up some bulk. And this is a simple pheasant tail, or in this case, roughed grouse dropper. If you're not sure what dropper fly to select, this is a great go-to, as it can represent many aquatic insects. And if you'd like to win this, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly can help you catch more fish. To start, we'll grab some olive thread and secure it to our hook shank, keeping the scraps for a later step. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook and reverse your thread to the hook point. We'll then grab some micro fibbits. However, here I'm using some synthetic deer hair. It makes for a versatile replacement that can be used in multiple situations. Select out three fibers and measure them to be about the length of your hook shank. Secure them carefully to the back of your fly, ensuring that you don't wrap too far into the bend of your hook. Once complete, snip your excess free and secure them tightly to the hook shank, ensuring that they don't move around. With this complete, we'll grab our strand of thread we just set to the side, string it through our hook, and use your fingers to help separate the micro fibbits. Carefully sliding your thread up the hook shank in between them to help create separation. Secure your thread in place and snip the excess free. Secure tightly, but make sure you don't wrap back on the micro fibbits. This step helps ensure that they splay out nicely like a mayfly's tail. Next, we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using a PMD color, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this up the fly, creating a smooth transition towards the hook eye. Be sure to add or tighten your dubbing as needed. Once complete, we'll lay down a thread base towards our hook eye, returning and wrapping back on top of the dubbing slightly. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather, here I'm using a sulfur color, and measure it to be about the length of our body. Secure using your thread, wrapping back towards the dubbing. There's a few ways you can tie this fly. You can do as I'm doing here, wrapping forward on our CDC, folding it back, and securing it just as we've done before. This will help utilize your extra CDC and add a bit more flotation to your fly. So if you'd like to use this as a dry fly, I would highly suggest adding this extra step. However, I typically use this as an emerger behind a second dry fly and don't mind if it sinks. So I'll simply snip this excess free, which makes for a cleaner looking fly pattern. Our next step is to grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward to continue our transition towards the head of the fly, having it slope down once we reach the hook eye. With this complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together Snip the excess free and secure in place with some UV resin. And this is the RS2. It's a highly versatile fly that I've caught fish using it as a nymph, an emerger, and even a dry fly. And I would highly suggest giving it a shot this spring. And if you'd like to win this one, be sure to comment below, hashtag flies. And I will see you in the next one. If you're looking for a dropper fly to use in the fall, look no further. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping, towards the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll grab some blue wing olive dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, 
and begin wrapping this forward in close touching spirals, building up a slight body transition towards the head of the fly. Continue to add or tighten the dubbing as needed. With this complete, we'll add a small strip of mylar to the top of our fly, securing it tightly just behind the head followed by some more dubbing. This time, we're using black. Create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this forward, once again in close, touching spirals towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. And grab a partridge feather. Snip the partridge feather into a triangle, like we see here, and attach it just behind the head of the fly. We'll secure it loosely at first, so we can position it in place by sliding it forward, folding over our mylar, and once again taking a few loose securing wraps. Finish positioning the partridge feather so that the legs of our fly extend just short of our body, like so. Once happy, secure everything tightly in place and snip the excess free. Followed by some whip finishes to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and add a drop of UV resin to head of the fly to add some durability as well as some shine to our pattern. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is a blue wing olive that I like to tie in extremely small sizes behind a dry fly. It can work exceptionally well in the fall and also the spring months. If you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This tiny fly ended up landing me my biggest fish last spring. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, grab some extra small wire, here I'm using black, secure it to your hook shank, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction a little bit past the barb. Here, we'll create a small buildup of thread that'll be the widest point in our fly. Once complete, we'll advance our thread forward, adding a couple layers of thread to our midsection and leaving some room at the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll once again create a small buildup of thread just behind the hook eye. This one will be slightly smaller than the tail. Next, grab your black wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, continuing to do so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and paint over the body with some UV resin. This will help create some shine, as well as make this pattern incredibly durable. And this is the black fly larva, a spring pattern that I never like to leave out of my fly box. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is so controversial that some are demanding it be banned. To tie it, we'll start off with some sartreuse thread, snipping the excess free. At which point, we'll continue wrapping towards the back of the fly, grabbing some flash. Here I'm using pearl. Select about five strands, and use your thread to secure it tightly to the back of the fly. Continue wrapping forward, and snip the excess free. Secure your tag ends, once again wrapping back towards our flash. We'll trim these to length and create a dubbing loop, wrapping it backwards towards our flash. With this complete, we'll grab some white UV ice dubbing, inserting it into our dubbing loop and spinning it up. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Once complete, we'll begin wrapping the dubbing noodle forward in close touching spirals, building up some bulk at the back of our fly. Once you reach your thread, secure and snip the excess free, using your thread to wrap back on it slightly to give it a more brush back look, pulling away any excess dubbing, making it about the size of your crystal flash. Next, we'll grab some chartreuse estaz securing it to our hook shank and laying down our thread base for the next step. Grab your staz and begin wrapping it forward once again in closed touching spirals. 
once again securing it tightly, securing both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Whip finishing to hold it all together and brushing over the head with some UV resin to add some durability. And this is the controversial blob, a fly that many traditionalists won't touch, but is extremely effective at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Have you ever stomped across a bunch of reds just to cast a fish that aren't interested in your egg pattern? Well have I got a fly for you. Be sure to try it before it gets banned. We'll start off with some black thread, grab some lateral scale and pearl, and secure it to our hook shank. Secure tightly and continue to do this to each side of our hook. Snip your excess free, grabbing some grizzly saddle hackle. Securing it tightly to your hook shank and repeating this process for each side. Snip your excess free, grab a grizzly cape, and we'll select two feathers for each side. We want to be sure to conceal this 100 gram weight that we're going to be casting at the fish. Securing two to each side should do the trick. Snip your excess free, and this should successfully cover the weight to look like another fish. We'll then grab a white marabou feather so we can help conceal our three large hooks. Secure this to the hook shank, making sure to brush the fibers backwards as to not trap any in the process. Once you reach your thread, secure tightly, snipping the excess free. And be sure not to get your hands stuck on these daggers. We'll whip finish, snip our thread free, switching over to a fluorescent hot pink thread. Secure to the hook shank, snip the excess free, and grab a pink marabou feather. We'll secure it to the hook shank, just as we did the white feather, wrap our thread forward, and begin to palmer it forward, just as we did before. Secure, snip the excess free, brush the marabou backwards, and use your thread to clean up the head section and build up a hot spot at the head of our fly. Be sure to use about a quarter to a half a spool in thread. As the more thread you put at the head of the fly, of course the better it looks. Once we have a significant amount of thread in place, we'll only do a two turn whip finish. Because we love tying so much, we want it to fall apart. Snip the thread free and paint over it with some UV resin. Secure in place. And this is the Snagmaster 3000, equipped with three extremely large hooks that are barbless so you can practice ethical snag and release. If you want to get yourself a ticket from the Game Warden, you should definitely give this one a try. Oh, and happy April Fool's Day. Today we're going to be tying a nymph that I like to fish in the fall. To start, we'll insert some lead-free wire into our bead, wrapping it halfway down our hook shank, at which point we'll grab the lead-free wire and begin to wrap it forward towards our bead in order to add some more weight to our pattern. While I don't always say this, you can do this with any pattern in order to add some more weight. And this is one method I like to do so. We'll continue wrapping it forward in close touching spirals until we reach our bead. At which point, we'll secure it tightly in place with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then use our thread to help further secure it before wrapping towards the bend of the hook. We'll then grab a small piece of chenille. Use a lighter to burn the tip to help add durability as well as create a head. And then use the lighter to burn down the sides, giving it a more rounded shape, like so. We'll secure about a quarter inch section, peeking out over the back of our fly, and secure it tightly in place. Continue securing up towards our lead-free wire to smooth out our body section and snip the excess free. Wrapping back towards the back of our fly, and grabbing a partridge feather. Strip a few sections free and secure them in place towards the back of your fly, making them a bit shorter than our chenille. Secure. Snip the excess free and grab some hairs here dubbing. Here I'm using brown. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just in front of our partridge. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look and add some character to our leg section. At which point, we'll grab some copper wire, secure it to the midsection of your fly, wrapping back towards your dubbing, and set it aside. We'll then grab three colors of hairs here, brown, black, and natural. Mix these together for a custom dubbing mix, and create another dubbing noodle. 
Adding these different colors is a great way to add character to your dubbing. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, and continue to do so, adding or removing dubbing as needed until we reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll grab our wire and use this to counter wrap our hair's ear. This will help add a bit of shine as well as durability to our pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicopter the excess free. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and this is a peeping October caddis. A pattern that represents a natural forage with a small hot spot, and for being this buggy, sinks incredibly fast in the water column. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up a unique streamer that was inspired by Carrie Stevens' Green Hornet. To start, we'll secure some black thread to our hook shank and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook and grab a jungle cock cape. We'll select these barred feathers off to the side, strip away the excess, securing them tightly to the back of the fly. Ensure that you secure them tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then wrap our thread back towards the head of the fly and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using the color wine. Secure the wire to the hook shank and wrap back towards the tail. Set your wire off to the side. Reverse your thread's direction, wrapping back to the head of the fly. Here, we'll put in a couple turn whip finish and snip our thread free. We'll then grab some brown rayon thread and secure it to the back of the fly. Snip your excess free and begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals, creating a smooth body towards the head of the fly. This particular thread is fantastic for building up nice clean bodies. However, it's very delicate and tends to fray. So take your time in the process. Once we reach the head of the fly, put in a couple turn whip finish, snip the excess free, and if yours frays like mine, carefully use a lighter to burn away the excess. Once complete, reattach your black thread, snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our wire and begin to wrap this forward, beginning in closed touching spirals to create some durability as well as a hot spot at the back of our fly, opening up your wraps as we move towards the body, being careful to make sure they're evenly spaced. Continue to do so until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the thread and helicoptering the excess furry. We'll then grab a hen cape in a greenwell-like pattern and select two feathers with prominent black bands, stripping away the excess and securing them carefully to the head of your fly. Once complete, snip the excess free and cover up your tag ends, using as little thread as possible in the process. We'll once again grab our jungle cock cape, select two of the feathers off to the side securing them to the side of our fly, starting with one side and then the other. Once again, snipping your excess free. Clean up the head of the fly and grab some jungle cock eyes. We'll select two eyes and secure them and secure them to the side of our fly, trying to stay in line with the barring of our previous feather. Once happy, secure it tightly and repeat the process to the other side. Snip your excess free Clean up the head and grab a deer tail. Here I've selected to use a natural color, grabbing the tan fibers from the back side of the tail. Select a small clump and secure it to the bottom of your fly. Snip your excess free and clean up the head of the fly. Whip finish for durability and snip the excess free. And in true Carrie Stevens fashion, we are going to create a hot spot on the head of our fly. Whip finish, snip your excess free, painting it with some UV resin to secure it tightly. And this is a freestyle fly that I've actually never fished. However, since yesterday was Carrie Stevens' birthday, I decided to have a little fun and tie a classic streamer pattern. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This simple streamer pattern works particularly well for bass as well as trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread. We'll then grab some gold wire, secure it to the hook shank, wrapping slightly into the bend of our hook. Return your thread roughly to the barb 
and begin wrapping your gold wire forward until you reach your thread. Doing so in closed touching spirals, ensuring that there's no gap left behind. Once complete, secure with your thread, reverse your gold wire, securing it back in the other direction. We'll then select two olive grizzly saddle hackle, measure them to be about one and a half times the hook shank length, carefully stripping away one side of the remaining fibers. With this complete, we'll secure it to the back of the fly, trying to trap as few fibers as possible, folding the remaining fibers over and securing them in the opposite direction. Once complete, we'll grab some synthetic dubbing. Here I'm using a blend of olive, copper, and green. Create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, building up a transition as we move towards the head of the fly. Be sure to continue to tighten and add more dubbing as needed. Once complete, build up a small thread base for our next steps. Grab our remaining saddle hackle and fold it over the top of the fly. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab our gold wire and begin to counter wrap our dubbing as well as a saddle hackle to help secure it in place. In doing so, try not to trap too many fibers in the process. This can be a bit tricky, but just take your time and continue this process until we reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll secure our wire with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab another olive saddle hackle, pull our fibers backwards, snipping away the tip, leaving us with a small tie end point. Use this to secure it towards the head of the fly, beginning to hackle it forward until we reach our thread. Doing so in close touching spirals, brushing the fibers backwards to ensure we don't trap any. With this complete, secure with your thread and snip the excess free. And use your thread to give it a brush back look. With this complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything in place, snip our thread free, grabbing some eyes of your choice. Here I'm using red. Turn our fly on its side, adding a small drop of UV resin and carefully positioning our eye in place. Fix with the UV light and repeat this process to the other side. Once complete, we can help secure these eyes in place by adding a few dabs of UV resin to the upper and lower side of our fly. And this is our finished streamer. If I'm being honest, I actually forgot the name of this one. However, it's a great pattern to use for trout and can work quite well for bass in its larger sizes. I'd highly suggest giving it a try. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We'll be tying up a simple, yet highly effective streamer pattern. To start, we'll grab some red thread, secure it to our hook shank, and continue wrapping to the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll grab some yellow cattail, select a small clump, and measure it to be a bit longer than our hook gap. To secure it to the back of the fly, I like to wrap my thread around the fur clump loosely, followed by a second wrap to tighten it up. This will help prevent the fur from spinning around the hook. With this complete, we'll continue to secure the cap tail to the hook shank, at which point we'll snip the excess free and cover up our remaining tag end. Next, we'll grab some chenille, wrap our thread to the back of the fly, stripping off a small section of the chenille, exposing the braided core, and using this to secure it to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll wrap our thread forward to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping our tan chenille forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until you reach your thread. At which point we'll secure it in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Build up a small hot spot at the head of the fly, helping to secure the chenille in place and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and add some adhesive. Here I'm using a UV resin, however, Ed Cement will work just as well. And this is the Maple Syrup. It's a classic main pattern that is incredibly simple, yet highly effective. And if you're new to fly tying, I would highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my all time favorite fly patterns that works particularly well for catching brook trout. To tie this pattern, we'll start off with some black thread grabbing a golden pheasant crest. Select a single feather and measure it to be a bit shorter than our hook shank. Secure this to the back of the fly. Continue securing the feather well up the hook shank until we reach the hook eye. 
at which point we'll snip the excess free, cover our tag end, and grab some peacock curl. Select a couple fibers and secure them to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards your tail. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction just before the hook point and begin wrapping your hurl forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until you reach your thread. At which point, secure with your thread, leaving a small quarter in section that we'll get back to in just a bit. Move your thread in front of the peacock hurl and wrap towards the hook eye. We'll then begin to wrap our peacock feather forward, just as before, until we reach our thread. Secure. And snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll whip finish, snip our thread free, and swap out to a red thread. Here I'm using an Ultra Thread 140. Secure this to your abdomen, filling in this small section with our red thread, signature characteristic of this pattern. Snip your excess free, and begin to build up a prominent base of your thread. Once complete, whip finish, and snip your thread free swapping back to your black thread. We'll then grab a turkey flat. I like to use this molted feather that I got from one of my hunting trips. Select two clumps of your feather, measure them to be about the length of the tail, and secure it using a pinch wrap. This will help prevent your feather from twisting around the eye. Once happy, continue securing tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then grab a cape. Here I'm using Inferno color and secure a small clump to the bottom of your fly to make up the throat. I generally like my fibers to extend just about to the hook point. Secure tightly and snip the excess free. We'll clean up our head section, whip finish, snip our thread free, and paint it over with some UV resin. And this is the Royal Coachman. It's one of my childhood favorites that has caught me, many brook trout. It works great as a small streamer, or as I like to use it, as a wet fly. You can tie it with the materials listed in the description, or you can pick it up from my website, and I will see you in the next one. This is a stonefly pattern that I like to use it as an attractor, specifically for steelhead. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, lay down a thread base, and add some wraps of lead-free wire in order to build up some bulk and increase the pattern's weight. If you need it to sink faster, you can also tie this with a bead head. Wrap your wire in place, snip any excess free, and secure it tightly in place by creating a small thread dam behind it, as well as in front, and wrapping throughout it. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread backwards well into the bend of the hook, and create a small buildup of thread. With this complete, we'll grab some black biots, snip a couple free, and secure them to the back of the fly. The thread dam that we just created will help splay them out in a V-shaped pattern, like so. Secure the remainder of the biots in place, and use your thread to help build up a transition leading up to your wire wraps. With this complete, we'll grab some vinyl D-rib. Here I'm using a medium in black, securing it towards the wire and wrapping back towards our biots. This will also help increase the bulk of your fly pattern. With this complete, we'll use our thread to continue creating our transition up towards the wire wraps until we're happy. You can build up as much or as little bulk as you like. Once happy, we'll wrap back down towards our biots, grabbing some black hairs here and creating a dubbing noodle. Spinning our dubbing noodle forward in close touching spirals until we're slightly on top of our wire wraps at which point we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Next, we'll grab our vinyl D-rib and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals. On each wrap, we'll grab our dubbing brush, brushing our fibers backwards in order to help trap them with the vinyl D-rib so a few of them stick through. This will help add some texture in between our vinyl D-wraps to give it a more lifelike appearance. Continue doing so until all the dubbing is covered, at which point we'll secure it tightly in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Create another dubbing noodle with your black hairs here, wrapping this just in front of your vinyl D-rib. 
brush it out, and grab some flash. Here I'm using lateral scale and pearl that I had laying around the desk. Secure the flash to the top of the hook shank, wrapping back slightly on top of our dubbing ball, followed by some thin skin. Here I'm using a molted turkey tail. With this complete, we'll grab some blue ice dubbing along with some black hair's ear. Mix the two together to create a dubbing mix. The small amount of hair's ear will help add some different texture and character to your dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this to build up some bulk just in front of our other materials. Brushing it out in a downward motion to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then fold over our thin skin, taking some thread wraps to secure it tightly in place before folding over our flash and securing it over the top. You can do these both at once. However, I have an easier time securing them properly in the position I'd like if I do one at a time. With this complete, we'll fold both of them backwards, wrapping on top of them slightly to hold them in place before our next steps. Once complete, we'll create another dubbing ball of the same blend and repeat the steps that we just took two more times. Keeping in mind that you want to build up a transition and still leave some room at the head of the fly. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Once we finish our final step, we'll snip our thin skin and flash free and grab some more black biots. This time, we'll use some smaller ones located at the tip of the biot. Securing them at the head of the fly, once again in a V formation, before snipping the excess free. With this complete, we'll use our thread to build up a small head of the fly just behind our hook eye, whip finishing to secure it in place, and continue adding some bulk. Snip your thread free and grab some UV resin to add some shine and durability to our pattern. I like to only add a small layer so the character of our thin skin still shows through. Fix it in place with the UV light and come back and add a small coat of UV resin around the head of our fly. Once again fixing in place with the UV light and brush it out to give it a nice bucky look. And this is a stone fly that I like to use as an attractor pattern, particularly in blues for steelhead. However, it works quite well in any hot spot you'd like, or in natural colors. And if you'd like to pick up a few of these with a biot variation, you can find them on my website listed below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a spring nymph that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, we'll grab some small wire. Here I'm using green, as well as some brassy wire in chartreuse. Select a single strand of chartreuse and two green wires. However, as for all of my patterns, you can use whatever colors you like to best match the bugs in your rivers. Secure them to the hook shank and begin wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction and we'll begin to build up a smooth transition to form our body. Grab your wires and begin to wrap them forward in closed touching spirals, ensuring that the green remains in contact with the chartreuse, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. Once complete, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Bring your thread to the head of the fly and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards our wire. Once complete, use your thread to build up a body that's even with your wire, leaving a small amount of room at the head of the fly. And grab some pearl UV crystal flash, selecting four strands and securing them to the head of the fly. Fold your strands over and secure them back towards our wire. Once complete, snip the excess free. Next, we'll fold our mylar over, secure it to the head of the fly, and snip the excess free. With this complete whip finish to build up a small head, snip your thread free, and paint over the back, head section, and our body with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. And this is the Juju Betis. This particular pattern works well to imitate blue wing olives. However, it can represent a variety of insects. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you.
in the next one. This simple midge can help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to the hook shank, and snap the excess free. Next, we'll grab some red crystal flash, measure it to be about the length of the hook shank, and secure it to the back of our fly. With the tail secured, we'll begin wrapping up towards the bead, snip the excess free, and grab some wire. Here I'm using small in the color rust. Insert the wire into the bead, secure tightly, and wrap towards the back of the fly. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse directions. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse direction, wrapping our thread towards the bead. Once complete, grab your wire and begin wrapping it in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Once you reach your bead, secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, then helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. This is one of my new favorites. You can find it in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap it just behind the bead. And brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is an inferno midge. It makes for a great attractor pattern. It sinks quickly and can be used year round. If you don't tie and would like to try it, you can pick some up on my website below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This tiny fly is a fish magnet. To tie it, We'll start off with some black thread and grab some small wire. Here I'm using rust. Insert the wire into the bead and secure it tightly with your thread. Continue securing the wire to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly. Once again reversing our thread's direction to begin to build up a body transition. You can make this as thick or as thin as you'd like. Once happy, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, taking care to make each wrap evenly spaced, doing so until you reach the head of the fly, at which point we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab a CDC feather, here I'm using white, and secure it to the head of the fly. Adjust your feather's length, to be about the size of your hook, and then secure it tightly in place. Snip the excess free, and continue securing, laying down a thread base for our next step. We'll then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend, incorporating some red fibers. Create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this around the head of your fly. Pull everything backwards, and whip finish to hold it all in place. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a variation of a CDC midge that I like to call the Inferno Emerger. The CDC will trap air bubbles just as wing case would and the red color will help attract attention. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be creating one of my favorite variations of one of the world's most popular flies. To start, we'll grab some black thread, secure it to our hook shank Continue wrapping back up towards the bead, inserting some lead-free wire and securing it tightly in place. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping backwards until we reach the bend of the hook. At which point we'll grab a black saddle hackle feather, strip free a few fibers and secure them to the back of the fly, measuring them to be roughly the size of our body. At which point we'll continue to secure the fibers to the top of the hook shank until we reach the bead. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Select a small piece of wire, inserting it into the bead and securing it to your hook shank. Continue wrapping backwards until you reach your tail. At which point we'll reverse our thread's direction once again and create a smooth body until we reach our bead. With this complete, we can grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals taking care to make sure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some straggle string, here I'm using black, securing the strand tightly just behind our bead, and then begin to hackle it forward for one to three turns. Secure with your thread, taking care not to trap any fibers. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything together. 
And this is one of my favorite variations of the zebra midge. The straggle string adds a little bit of a hot spot and gives it an extra buggy look. It's simple to tie, durable, and will definitely catch you some fish. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Have you ever looked at the midges in your river only to find out that you have nothing in your fly box that represents a clear pattern? Well, this midge solves that problem. To start, we'll secure some mono thread to our hook shank and grab some clear vinyl ribbing. We'll secure this to our hook shank right around the hook point. Secure tightly and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Reverse your thread's direction, finishing at the hook point. We'll then grab some UV crystal flash, here I'm using pearl, secure a single strand to your hook shank, and begin building up a small body transition towards the head of the fly. Grab your crystal flash and begin to take a few touching turns, and begin to take a few touching turns a little ways past your hook point, and continuing up to the thread. Secure. and grab your vinyl wire. We'll begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and snipping the excess free. Secure your tag end and build up a thread base at the head of the fly to be equal to the body section finishing with your thread at the head of the fly, at which point we'll grab our crystal flash and begin to wrap this back on top of our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Whip finish for durability, snip your thread free and paint over the head with a little bit of UV resin. And this is a diamond bling midge and give it a try next time you see some phantom or clear midges in your waters. If you don't tie, you can pick this up from my website listed below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you fish for wild, unpressured fish, this fly is for you. To start, we'll secure some black thread to our hook shank, wrapping all the way to the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll grab some white feathers, strip a small section free, and secure it to the back of the fly. Trim the excess free and secure it tightly to our hook shank, ensuring that the feathers remain on the top side of our hook. We'll then grab some elk hair or deer hair, strip a small section free, cleaning out any of the under fur. Add the fur to a hair stacker and tap it to align the fibers. We'll then snip the tips free and secure it tightly to our hook shank ensuring that the feathers remain on the top side of our hook and continue wrapping to the tail of our fly. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction, whip finish, snip the excess free, and swap it out to a red thread. Secure your red thread to the hook shank, snip the excess free, wrapping to the back of the fly. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction and begin to build up a body transition. Doing so by wrapping back almost to our starting point, reversing our thread's direction and continuing this process in order to build up a larger body section. With this complete, we'll whip finish, snip our thread free, and swap back out to our black thread. Snap the excess free, wrapping back towards our red body section. Here, we'll grab our elk hair, fold it over, and secure it to the top section of our fly, securing the excess tightly to the head of our fly. At which point, we'll grab a rooster cape in the color brown or furnace. Select a single feather, stripping the fibers free and securing it to the head of the fly. Set your feather to the side and grab some white poly yarn. Secure your poly yarn to the head of your fly, ensuring that it remains on the upper section. Secure the poly yarn tightly to the head of the fly by taking thread wraps over the top of the yarn. Continue to do so by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the poly arm to help it stand up straight and snip the excess free. Grab your little hackle and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals. This fly is meant to be extremely buoyant and by adding more hackle helps us achieve this goal. Continue wrapping your hackle forward until you reach your thread. 
at which point we'll secure it in place with our thread, brushing everything backwards to ensure we don't trap any fibers beneath. Snip the excess free, whip finish, snip your thread free, and if you missed any feathers at the head of the fly like I did, you can use a lighter to clean it up. We'll then snip the excess poly yarn free, having it be a bit longer than our hackle, and clean up any unwanted fibers. And this is a red humpy, an extremely productive attractor pattern that I like to use for wild brook trout, and would highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up a fly pattern known as the butt monkey. To start, we'll grab some olive marabou, measure it to be a bit longer than our hook shank, and secure it tightly to the back of the fly. Continue securing it forward by folding over the marabou, wrapping towards the head of the fly, folding the marabou back over, and securing it tightly in place. Once again wrapping back towards the back of the fly, snip the excess free, and grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using olive. Secure about four strands to one side of the fly, fold it over, and secure them to the other, snipping them to length to be a bit longer than our marabou. We'll then grab a zonker strip, place it on top of our fly, pulling the fibers to the side to reveal the leather underneath. Use this to secure it tightly in place without catching too many fibers in the process. Secure tightly. Fold the excess over, adding a few wraps just in front. Next, we'll grab some estaz, securing it tightly to our hook shank and wrapping towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we can begin wrapping it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Pull everything backwards, putting a few securing wraps over the top, taking our zonker strip, folding it over, and securing it tightly to the head of our fly. Snip the excess free, and cover up your tag ends, whip finishing to hold it tightly together once complete. Snip your thread free, and use a razor blade to cut your zonker strip to length. Using the razor blade, creates a clean cut while not touching the excess fur that'll protrude over it. We'll then paint over the head with some UV resin to add some durability and clean up the look and fix it in place with a UV light. And this will make up the back half of our fly. We'll then grab some wire, insert it through the eye before removing it from the vise. You can then grab a bead color of your choice. Here I'm using Peacock. Also, we just restocked the Mainly Outdoor websites with some more hats, including this brand new black variation. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can pick one up, listed in the comments below. We'll insert our bead over the wire and place a new hook in our vise. Resecure your black thread to the hook shank, snap the excess free, and wrap towards the bend of the hook. Here, we'll grab the tail that we just created, using the wire to secure it tightly to the hook shank. If you want to extend the tail, you can add a few more beads but when securing it, you want to ensure that it's snug, but not too loose that it'll get wrapped around the front hook. You can check by simply wiggling it around and seeing how much movement it has. Once happy, we'll continue securing the wire forward, wrapping up towards the hook eye, stopping just short of it. Once happy, we'll grab our wires, folding them backwards, and re-securing over the top of them. This will help ensure that our trailer can't pull out. Snip the excess free using the back of your scissors and add a dumbbell eye to the head of the fly. To secure this, use several thread wraps in a figure eight pattern to help lock it in place. The goal is to make sure it stays in place and doesn't spin around the hook shank. To help this, I like to finish off by doing figure eight patterns underneath the hook shank, between the dumbbell eye and the hook shank itself. This helps tighten up the thread wraps that you just laid in place to help maintain its position. Once complete, check to sure it's locked in place and you can add some extra insurance by panning it over with some super glue, repeating this process on the wires themselves. Next, we'll start wrapping towards the back of our hook shank and create a dubbing loop. With this complete, we'll insert some olive dubbing. Here I'm using an ice dubbing in a blend of chartreuse and copper. Spin it up and brush it out before pulling the fibers backwards 
and wrapping it over the back of the fly to create a dubbing ball. This step isn't necessary, but adds a nice hot spot that helps blend in the front of the fly to the trailer. With this complete, we'll secure it in place, snip the excess free, and brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Once happy, we'll wrap back on it slightly to help give it a brush back look before wrapping forward and creating another dubbing loop. This time, we'll grab a small section of the zonker strip, inserting it into our dubbing loop so it looks something like this before trimming the leather free. We'll repeat the process of spinning it up, brushing it out, and wrapping it forward until we reach our thread. With this complete, we'll secure it in place, snip the excess free, and once again brush it out to straighten out our fibers. Wrapping back on it slightly once again to give it a brush back look. With this complete, we'll tie in some more olive estaz, securing it tightly just in front of our dubbing balls, wrapping your thread forward up towards a hook eye, followed by your estaz once again in open spirals. Secure it in place using your thread by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snip the excess free. Grab another zonker strip, secure it over the top just behind your dumbbell eyes, and snip the excess free. We'll then cover up our tag ends to create a smooth base for our next steps and use the razor blade to trim the zonker strip to length. You want to ensure that the fibers aren't sticking out past your back hook, otherwise they'll tend to get caught up in it when casting. Next, we'll add a throat to our fly by grabbing some copper dubbing and securing it just behind our dumbbell eyes. Fold it over and secure it tightly in place to give it a brush back look. And with this complete, we're ready to make our head. To do so, we'll grab some deer hair here in the Cutler Olive, select a small clump about the size of a pencil, and insert it into a hair stacker. Stack it up so that the tips are all even and brush out any insulating underfibers. For this first clump, we'll take one loose thread wrap around the deer hair itself, followed by one underneath. Continue this loose wrap, pulling in an upward motion to pin the deer hair to only the top section of our fly. Continue to tighten it in place, holding onto it with your fingers to ensure it doesn't move. Once complete, we'll trim the excess free. And cover up our tag ends. We'll then grab another clump of deer hair. This time, we want it to spin around our hook shank. Do so by taking one loose wrap before pulling it tightly to help spin it around our hook. With this complete, take a few wraps throughout it to help secure it in place before folding everything backwards and wrapping towards the front of the deer hair. With that complete, we'll add one more clump of deer hair, once again taking a loose wrap and tightening it as you go to help it spin around the hook. You can use your fingers to aid in this process. With this complete, we'll secure it in place by taking a few thread wraps throughout it before brushing everything back and finishing at the head of the fly. Whip finish to secure everything in place. Snip your thread free and grab a razor blade. We'll use this razor blade to help trim up the head into shape. To do this, We'll cut the underside completely flat before rounding out the upper body section, leaving a small collar towards the back of the fly. Take your time with this process, as it's best to do a little at a time so you don't mess up and cut off too much. Continue to trim up the head until the upper section slightly cone-shaped, leaving a small collar of that initial deer hair that we tied in. And this is an articulated streamer that can be used for any large predatory fish called the butt monkey, created by Kelly Gallup. It's a fun one to tie, and its articulated tail section make it extremely lifelike and attractive to fish. I'd give this one away, but I tied it up recently to use for my recent bull trout fishing trip. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you're fishing in winter, this is a pattern you won't want to leave behind. 
We'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, snapping the excess free, and inserting a wire into our bead in order to secure it in place. Helicopter the excess free, and continue wrapping into the bend of our hook shank. And if you'd like to win this fly, subscribe to the channel and comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Next, we'll grab some black feathers to use as our tail. Here I've selected Marabou for its movement. Secure it tightly to the back of the fly so the feathers splay out. And continue securing it to the hook shank back up towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll snip the excess free and grab some silver brassy wire. Insert the wire into the bead and secure it tightly in place. Once again, wrapping back towards the tail of our fly. With this complete, we'll begin to build up the body section by wrapping our thread forward almost to the head of the fly and reversing our thread's direction back towards the starting point and continuing to do so, making it as bulky or as thin as you like until you're happy with the results. With this complete, we'll grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll grab a red material to use as our back, securing it tightly to the head of our fly, wrapping back slightly on top of our wire. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I've made a mix of some red and black fibers. Create a dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap this forward building up some bulk for our body section, doing so until you reach the head of your fly. At which point, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then grab some crystal flash, securing the two strands tightly to the head of the fly. At which point, we'll fold our red material over, securing it tightly to the head of the fly by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, before snipping the excess free trim the flash to length and whip finish to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and add some UV resin over the back in order to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with a UV light and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a pattern that I especially like to use for wintertime trout. And if you'd like to stock up your fly box, you can visit the Mainly Outdoors website listed below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the most popular flies out there, and this particular one has a secret. To tie it, we'll start off with some white thread, secure it to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. We'll continue wrapping backwards until we reach the bend of our hook and grab some white marabou. Measuring your marabou to be a bit longer than the hook shank, transfer your measurement and tightly secure it to the back of the fly. With this complete, we'll fold over the marabou, wrap to the bead, folding the marabou back over, and securing it tightly in place. And if you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Snip the excess free, adding a single wrap to the back of the marabou to help secure it in place. Next, we'll grab some flash. Here I'm using pearl. Securing several strands to one side of our fly, before folding it over and securing them to the other. Continue wrapping backwards until you reach your tail, snipping them to be a bit longer than our marabou. We'll then grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Secure it to the side of your fly, once again wrapping back towards the tail, followed by some white astaz. Securing it tightly in place, once again wrapping back towards our tail, before wrapping your thread up to the bead. With this complete, we'll grab our estaz and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some hackle. Here I'm using a grizzly, pulling some excess fibers free and securing it to the head of your fly. Snipping the excess free and begin to wrap it backwards adding a few extra wraps towards the head of the fly before continuing backwards in open spirals. We'll continue to do so until we reach our tail, at which point we'll grab our wire, counter wrapping the hackle, 
to help secure it tightly in place, trying to prevent from trapping any hackle fibers in the process, and continue to do so until you reach your bead. At which point, we'll secure the wire in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll brush everything backwards and use our thread to help give it a more brush back look, before snipping our excess hackle free and grabbing some white ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just in front of your hackle. And of course brush it out to help remove any trap fibers and give it a nice buggy look. With this complete, we'll whip finish to hold it all in place, snip our thread free, and this is a highly productive variation of the crystal woolly bugger. And this one even glows in the dark. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.